god, we can totally make one of these. <laughs> and we did, and it's fantastic. I adore this game. This is the little bit where we can talk about the other Okay, this is Oh yeah. What's flash? Ladies and gentlemen, we Joe had a great fit suppression last week's video. Uh, <laughs> I need some meat! Episode 103 of the Chair Shop Podcast has finally arrived a day late and a dollar short, but God, we have so much to talk about this week. Millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. So, welcome to your weekly scheduled uh, CSP. We wouldn't let you down, We even though Saturday we uh, weren't available to uh, do our usual stuff. We're here on Sunday, special Sunday night edition, so obviously... I'm here because I'm on the video, and I'm Paul Griffin. Not that one, the good one. Also here, you, you may have already heard his voice. It's Mr. Joe, towny boy town, living in the town towner. Yo! Hey, Joe. Yo. I was waiting for the, all the audience for doing it back to me. And in the other corner, in the blue corner, blah, blah, Barry Murphy. Hi, everyone. Hi. <laughs> Barry's not quite as enthusiastic. Hey. Wait, 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 I'm in a good mood. I, I, just, I don't know. I was trying to think of something. I was trying to think of an observation. Like, hmm, you know, wrestling hasn't used red and blue corners since 1932. But I don't actually know any statistics of that nature. So, oh, I didn't yeah. bother. Also, I'm very hungover. <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing about one of the wrestling podcasts I listen to that I don't really like. Where they'll introduce each person show and then they'll... Uh, not say something funny, but they go, I was at the hot dog stand this week. Do you ever notice how hot dogs are so expensive now? It's like, what? Huh? Be, either be funny, or talk about wrestling, or shut up! I tell, you, I tell you what, though. There is no more overpriced item in the realm of fast food than the hot dog. <sighs> Maybe they're not true. You don't get a lot of sustenance from a hot dog. You know, a, a, a hot dog is about three minutes worth of eating, and you're hungry, like, maybe a half hour later, yeah. and I would, I mean, anytime, anytime someone tries to charge me more than four euro for a hot dog, I'm like, okay. Do, do, What's do you, euro? I, I tell you what, add in sugar, right? Never employ you, because that's a terrible business model, right? <laughs> Two quid for a hot dog, max. Yeah. Otherwise, you take this. Um, now I want a hot dog, that's great. Oh, well. Well, we've a lot to talk about this week. I think this might be our most wall-to-wall, bumper-filled pack edition. In terms of wrestling, anyway. Because we've all watched a lot of stuff this week. Yeah. Including mm. the, the, the return of TNA to CSP. Who would have seen that one coming? <laughs> Swerve! I really want to start watching more TNA because everything I've seen from the last couple of months, I, I drop in every now and then. It's been pretty good. And... I'm about as low on WWE as I can possibly yeah, be. I was going right to say, now. especially with the news that dropped uh, this week, with uh, the, well, we'll the direction that. that Raw and Impact seems to be going in for the, the near future. We'll hear about later. Yeah, keep yeah. tuned for that one. Breaking yeah. exclusive news on CSV. Yeah, and also, and, and, and I'm not too hot on Ring of Honor currently either. Um, yeah. I, got, I got um, I got the best of El Generico DVD in the post today or this week. And I was watching Nigel McGuinness versus El Generico from like two years ago. I was like, you know what? Ring of Honor ain't what it used to be. Because that was a fucking great match. Between two great Ring of people. Honor ain't what it used to be. 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 I'm not wearing any pants and I'm dancing around. And I'm also sort of grey and wrinkly. Hubba hubba. So. Actually, theoretically, I could uh, video, by the way, but... It probably we would risk uh, losing me on the audio, and I know. I mean, we would never ever do a show where I wouldn't be audible. That's that the would audio work. is really good, so let's not do anything that can you know mess it up potentially. Don't yeah, open I, any websites or anything. Sorry. I already have my browser open. Don't I've, I've solid. Yeah, because I was explaining to 
okay. someone over the week that this is such an upgrade for you. You, I remember every time we used to have to record a show, you couldn't have Skype and Firefox open at the same time. And also, I was using an old Skype from that okay. website. Some of you might have Skype version like five old or something. Or something like that, where they have like, if you're like me and you have a crappy computer. Yeah, if you have a crappy computer, you can go to this website and download a less strenuous, older version of things like Skype and Firefox and such. I was using an old Skype, it's ugly, and my computer could still even barely handle that. But yeah, I'll, I'll tell, I suppose I can tell that story now. I started a new job uh, this week. It's not really a full, proper job. I used to do it for college. It's like work experience. And um, they needed a computer for me to work on, and so they bought one, a laptop. And they're like, we can't really pay you. Um, until at least later in the summer because we have to speak to our investors. So uh, why don't you just keep that for personal use and that's your payment for the first couple of months. And I was like, okay, I can do that because I, I, I was not expecting to get paid anything because it's an unpaid internship, but I'll, I'll, I'll take this free laptop. Thank you. And um, so yeah, I, I'm in love with this. It's fast and it works and it has a built-in webcam and like I can run more than one program at any given time. You know, yeah. the... the um, the um, the uh, RAM is like you know in the double digits. That's impressive. Oh God. You know, actually, actually, it's uh, in the one digits with GB. I think my old computer had 512 megabytes of RAM. Okay. I think yeah. this one has four gigabytes. So that's good. Have so you also the, upgraded from a square screen to a more rectangular screen? Yeah. That's nice. I, I can't believe this. This is like. I, I'm seeing dimensions and pixels I've never seen before on, <laughs> on it. There's you a whole right hand side that he's never seen before. I know. Did you did you know that if you went to Gmail on a proper screen, there's little things on the side that say inbox and things like that? <laughs> Those are all you know on, if you go on Twitter you can actually see trending topics that, that people are talking about. What? <laughs> You can see, uh, see what Justin Bieber's been up to. And if you're on other websites you, you can now see both <laughs> boobs. Bieber till I die! <laughs> oh god uh, Joe Also I mean listen My old computer listen, It would take me In the same way It takes some people A few minutes to buffer A 10 minute YouTube video I had to sit here And wait while GIFs buffered On my old computer <laughs> And I know you're someone Who likes his GIFs Barry I love an, I love an old GIF I love an old GIF, GIF. But um Yeah that, So, so I, my week has been good And I also Um I've been out the last two nights, so I can't complain about my life currently. Why don't you do? Um, well, the reason we we didn't want to do the show yesterday, uh, I think it was uh, me, myself and Joe, right, are obviously big football fans. And the Champions League final was on last night. It's beginning, it? beginning at 8 o'clock. And I only realised this yesterday afternoon. No, Friday afternoon, sorry. And I came on and I said, Joe, CSP, right? Champions League, right? What are we going to do? <laughs> Should we cut it off? <laughs> Cancel it! For those who, uh, in, in America or wherever, it's like the Super Bowl. The the Super Bowl of the football. The soccer Super Bowl. Soccer it ball. Fucking boring. Um, that's what you got. And it was, it was so good, and I'm so happy we didn't do a CSP yesterday. But we're here today anyway, so... Yeah. I'm just saying, that's if people were wondering why we... we why they came on Sunday morning down, to download their podcast, uh, they wasn't there. That's because, uh, that's why. So sorry about that. It's probably bigger, it's probably bigger than the Super Bowl, because the funny thing about American football is... The greatest sport in the world. It's only played in your country, right? First of all. Yeah. Champions League, that's all Europe, baby. That's true, but even the Super Bowl is quite big over here as, uh, as well. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's true. A lot of pubs are doing the uh, late nice lock in thing these days. So not things like darts or snooker, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Who was it? It was Dana White last Oh week. god UFC no, worldwide is bigger than soccer. Bigger what than are you soccer? talking about? <laughs> what are you on about? <laughs> that's that's even disputable in America, let alone in the rest of the world. Oh my god. Yeah, it's not for the Even in the bubble. The ignorant ballsy headed bubble. Oh my god. We can talk about that in the news as well. Um, That's not news. Why are we talking about this? Well, no, it was because Dana also had a go at 
Meltzer in the week. Yeah, I guess that's not a wrestling news either. Now I think about it. But Dave Meltzer. Sorry. 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 <laughs> but yeah, Dana White's having a. He's doing more, more, more like Vince McMahon every day. Yeah. Oh well, poor Dana. Uh, Forrest Griffin's gonna come out with a farting gimmick in a couple of months. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever happens to that, I wouldn't tell you. It's going to be one of the press conference and then they're going to be like, oh, you think that's funny, dude? Instead of tapping out, he's just going to tap one out. <laughs> oh, he's farting! Ring the bell. DQ. Um, I guess we have a lot to talk about, so let's, uh, let's uh, get on with it. That's enough. That's enough. Oh, nonsense. I was going to make another joke. I was going to make another comparison. Oh. Okay, go on, Barry. We'll allow it. Quick. Okay, so, so, get this right. Get this right. <laughs> So, so Alistair Overeem comes back, okay. and he gets the title shot, and Dana's like, oh my god, I don't want him to win, because it'd be bad for the sport. So, um, so, uh, Junior Dos Santos puts him in a submission, and then Dana goes, ring the fucking bell, ring the fucking bell, and the bell rings, and all the, um, Dutch people in attendance go mad. Josh Rosenthal leaps out of the octagon into a waiting limo. Oh my god. Yeah. And the limo blows up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was... <laughs> Dana. Go oh, my legs. <laughs> I feel my legs, Brock. <laughs> oh, no, Brock's not there anymore. Uh, who's a good fire, man? George. I can feel my legs, George. Um, so, uh, um, today we have a lot to talk about. We do. Where to begin? Let's let's begin this week with a uh, TNA pay per view. Okay, okay. It opened with. Uh, Joe and Magnus versus Daniels and Kazarian. This is uh, Sacrifice, by the way, we're talking about. Yeah. In case you're thinking, why are they talking about lockdown a month late? No, there's another one on. Sacrifice. Um, so yeah, I was kind of surprised to see um, the two Baldy Chaps win. Um, well, this is the first TNA I've watched since October, I want to say. Really? Yeah. Since, well, I mean, I I'm not sure if it's October, maybe November, December at the very least, but I mean, it was Bound for Glory-ish when, because as soon as we stopped uh, talking about it, I haven't watched any since. No pay-per-views, okay. no TV. So when I saw Daniels and Kazarian, and Kazarian, uh, this is the first time I've seen him since he's cut all his hair off. Um, it's been a bit, a bit, a bit shocking. Yeah. I thought it was stupid at first, but I always remembered I hated his hair to begin with, so... Um, match itself was very good. I don't know whether it's because I've been away from TNA for so long that I've come back and sort of fresh again, but I liked a lot on this. Like, this match was, re I thought it was really good. Really good tag Oh yeah, match. definitely. It's the sort of thing that you never see in WWE anymore, like a good, you know, 12 minute tag match. Uh, I'm not counting, you know, in our main event, John Cena and Randy Orton against Alberto Del Rio and whoever. I don't really count that as much. Like a good tag division tag match where, you know, one guy gets the heat and he go make a tag and blah blah blah. I thought it was great. Great match. Oh my god, what's happened? Oh, Barry's gone. Barry's gone. Good thing I'm doing the double recording because the f the one recording program that I use is just uh, oh no, bit of dust. Um, so Barry's gone for a minute. So Joe, yeah, this match was great, wasn't it? I don't know. I missed the first hour. Oh, for God's sake, Joe! <laughs> 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 great timing. <laughs> See where he goes. Um, well, you got to take my word for it, Joe. This match is really good. Oh, I'm sure it was. You know, I like I like these guys. All four of them are. Magnus has got really good. When that? Happen? Yeah. Well, he's, he was the Wrinkle King champion, so oh, he was. you can't you can't be the Wrinkle King champion and not be a good worker. <laughs> you know what those Indian fans are like when it comes to work, right? They will f oh, just bury you. <laughs> <laughs> they anything less than four and a half stars. What does they that do? They jump on their little rickshaws or whatever, and they drive back to the slums, <laughs> and they <laughs> they get on their 56k modems. And they will slag you off all over AOL. All over the WWE Facebook page. Mm. AOL. God, that's not a brand I've heard in a while. Um, let me see what happened here. I know that the baddies won in the end. Being uh, Daniels and Kazarian. Yeah. 
Um, it's quite a short reign for Magnus and Joe. When, when did they win the belts? Uh, it was only a couple of months ago, I think. Yeah. They're a pretty good team. Um, let me have a look at the old uh, results page here. Because this was so much rest in this guy, I, I don't even remember. Mm. I don't even remember what's happened. Um, ba -ba 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 let me see. Joe got sent out of the ring somehow. And mm -hmm. they, they hit their finisher on Magnus. What's their move? What's their finishing move? I don't remember. It, it, it doesn't have a name. Well, they've not done it before, but um, they did total elimination. Which is. Oh, it's the. Um, oh, the eliminator's uh, high low kick. Yeah, of course. The uh, leg sweep into a, a sort of a spin kick. For the yeah. uh, for the win, that looks really good. I must say, as well. they did, yes. they did it very uh, very fluidly. Magnus is really good. Yeah, we were just talking about that. When did that happen? Yeah, well, it took time, obviously, but like, and and also he's really charismatic. So I guess he's he's kind of CNA do have a lot of young, t talented new guys on their roster. It's not all Garrett Bischoff and Crimson. They do have. Uh, <laughs> A decent amount of talent, as, as we'll see later on in the show. But yeah, it's a good match. Bit of a weird, uh, bit weird seeing like one of the hottest acts in TNA lose. But I guess they're doing um, the Baldy fellas, AJ and Angle for the tag titles is the program going forward. Yeah, Samoa so Joe is just getting bigger and bigger as well. Yeah, he didn't look good. He could really wrestle as oh, yes. as Imposter Vader anytime soon. Throw the Vader gear on him. And he'll just try and get in the ring. <laughs> just just fall. Get in the ring with his <laughs> bed <laughs> fall off. That was great. Why did they bring Vader back that time? It was good. What was that? Was was that to be Tuesday oh, or Cyber mean, Sunday? When they brought oh, back in like right, 2006 yeah. or whatever with Goldust for John and Coachman. Yeah, that wasn't good. What, so what was the logic behind that? The coach brought in these two washed up <laughs> Um Not sure. Vader was was like positively egg shaped, <laughs> and he he fell off the ring famously, <laughs> just rolled over. I don't remember. Yeah, up to. <laughs> exactly like him too. And all the horses, man, and all the <laughs> could not put a horse together. All the horsemen tried to put the ring. Woo! Charlie Blanchard was out there. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Oh, how has that joke never been made before in the history of wrestling? I have no idea. All the kings, let me think this is any, all the kings in the ring and all the horsemen tried to... All the rinky king. All the rinky king and all the horsemen couldn't put Vader together again. <laughs> Poor Vader, what's he up to now? He's, he's still doing Indies. Alright, oh, we just... I, I think he's in Germany as well. I think, I think he's around, he's around. Is his son still in FCW? Mm, yeah. I, yeah, I think so. Alright. Well, yeah, that might oh, whatever, let's see. Oh, yeah, NX, NXT FCW mix. That I, I read the results of those tapings. It just seems like the strangest. Yeah, I don't know what it's supposed to be at all. They taped about 400 matches as well. It's like FCW, but with the main event is like Tyler Rex and the JTG. It's Seamus on there. Seamus and Del Rio. Del Rio in the dark main, yeah. After like six hours of tapings or whatever. No, I think it's going to be on TV. Oh, is it? Yeah, because they, they want people to actually... It's going to be like superstars. They, they'll put the stars on for the first couple of tapings and then they'll they'll realise that they don't have the time. Yeah. All right. Although, they're not being done. Obviously, they have... Their, we'll talk about that later. We'll talk about that later. Okay. Because they'll pay per view at the moment. Um, next up... Gail Kim. Bruce Techmacher was out. I love Techmacher. She good. Brooke Tessmacher. For the, yeah. the not the KO title. Sorry. Yeah. Brooke is okay. Is she? This is just seemed like any 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 woman's match I've ever seen, really. Well, yeah, yeah, it was nothing. It was nothing you know. Gail Gail is, is really boring, I think. Yeah. I don't even lot to say about this really. <laughs> it wasn't it was nothing, it was just a was that. Although it didn't it end in a roll up. Be, won't be as good as the one tonight, I don't think. Um who's who's on tonight? Layla and Best. <laughs> It'd probably be just as uh, just as good if anything. 
Just just forget them. Well, no, because they're both better than Brooke, and I'd say Beth is about the same as Gail, so... Marginally. <laughs> so the next match... <laughs> that was just so down on it. Marginally. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, 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 the truth hurts. No, the truth hurts. <laughs> um, we had TV title match. Devon, who I, I must say, since I've seen him last, he's in the best shape of his life. Yeah, he was really fat the last time I watched Yeah, him. I haven't. Like, he was bigger than Vader. He was like a big <laughs> chocolate Easter egg. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's racist, I apologise for that. Don't ever apologise. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't apologise, you haven't done anything wrong. Exactly. Um, against Ravi E and Ravi T. Uh, nothing. Yeah, that thing was okay. Um, it was very, very short. I think Devon is a very good baby face. I think he's underrated, if anything. Yeah, me too. Ever since, um... Which preview was on last year when they did the big segment with Diva and his kids and Bully Ray? Turning point. Where Bully Ray powerbombed Devon's kid through the table and then it didn't lead it to any. It led to the Pope being Devon's son's friend or something. Oh, God, yeah. Um, I don't think Devon and Bubba Ray had a match after that. I don't, I don't think they did. They it may have had Tommy Dreamer versus Bully Ray, and that led to the infamous "Is that SpongeBob gimmick?" Ridiculous! That is still in the uh, that's in the show intro for this. Uh, yeah, audio. I feel like I feel like we should explain. By the way, just in case anyone watches this show and thinks, "Oh my God, they're more twats on YouTube with a wacky intro of wrestling action." Right, the reason is right. The network commercial footage, we put that in there because Joe once narrated that ride. Right? That's <laughs> where that's in there. Um, Gene, there's Gene uh, Oakland's face by the door. <laughs> and it's big. Yeah. Big face. <laughs> what, is, what else is in the intro? The, uh, uh, if you're wondering why there's a clip of 1999 Big Show on the <laughs> that's one of uh, Paul Griffin's all time favourite references to this one time backstage. <laughs> Ministry of Darkness slash Biker on the Baker goes to Big Show. You want to pick that? You want to pick that up? You want to do it? You want to pick that up? That punk card you just gave you. Uh, so that's in there. You want to pick up that punk card, Val B? Just just give you. Like the money is in the infusion. That was brilliant. Um, there's well, there's the Ric Flair Jay Lethal segment. Oh yeah, that was one of our favorite segments from TNA ever, and, and also the uh, Seamus the Ford perfect thing. segment is in there. It was one of our one of our favorite segments from our own show, I think, where we argued about whether or not um, Seamus and Randy Orton's promo before SummerSlam 2010 was the perfect segment to build up that match, and uh, so they, did, but they are now feuding once again. So yeah, that's what our intro is. We didn't just. We're not putting together all this footage of wrestlers to make it look like we run an exciting... They are all in-jokes. They're all in-jokes, yeah. And uh, Bruce Buffer is just saying that you're live, because we are live, like right now. There's also the little bit of the WWE intro that you knocked together with, like, Marty McFly at the top of it. Oh, yeah, yeah. That is a really old reference now. Yeah, Back when you used to do the random retro review. Um, if you want to check that out, you need to go to chairshoppodcast.com and check out some of the episodes, like episode... Like twenty around, or so, eighty episodes ago, where we used to do these retro reviews. Marty. Uh, what was next? Oh, TV title. Um, yeah, Devon won, and the Robbies teased problems, but they uh, they didn't fight. So there you go. I love Robbie E's. I just love Rob- Robbie E. Basically, in general, his entrance is so good. Yeah. With the list. Written in like rhinestones and then get back. Robbie E is great. Robbie E is everything Zack Ryder should have been. Yeah, how how funny is that? Like six months ago, people would have said the opposite, and now now look at where we are. Well, Zack Ryder is just John Cena light at this stage, where he's the guy with the, who's a bit dumb and he has the wacky merch. Except he, except he loses. He loses, yeah. Yeah. Like tonight, for example. Oh god. Yeah, can. Uh, what was next? Next was Jeff Hardy 
and Anderson. Oh, this match is bad. Well, Mr. Anderson's never been any good, so that didn't change. He's all, he's all pudgy and heavy and sort of slovenly looking. <laughs> he is a slovenly <laughs> ape, that's for sure. Um, yeah, they had like a really slow, not awful match. Well, if you said to me, okay, we're going to have Mr. Anderson against Rob Van Dam. But if you can pick any one person to substitute for Rob Van Dam and make the match a little less sloppy, I wouldn't pick Jeff Hardy. Yeah, if they both had a good night, this probably would have been a good match. But as it was, they, they just did their thing. And the finish was, was Botched terrible. Well. Hardy, Hardy went for his sort of uh, leg drop to the ball spot. Uh, Anderson blocked it. Well, I like Hardy, that. I like the, the spot. Yeah, so, so Anderson blocked it, and when Hardy uh, flew backwards, he hopped on top of him for the pin, and something happened, Earl Hebner just counted the three, even though it wasn't finished, and then Mr. Anderson did the classic, I'm so annoyed, I just won face, <laughs> and uh, Jeff Hardy just sat there like he wasn't really bothered, and uh, that was it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, it was, it was you know, it's kind of weird, I don't know why, and because Anderson was apparently supposed to win anyway, I don't know why you'd have Anderson beat Hardy, you know. Hmm. It reminds me of CM Punk and Jack Swagger earlier this year. Yeah. Where Punk won and was all pissed about it. I mean, are <laughs> these sh- 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 people not told that, like, if you win, you, you know, act like, you- oh, I won, hooray. Nope, apparently not. No, apparently I mean, it's... Uh, it's, 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 it's they wouldn't need to be told. Yeah, it's very... It, it, it comes out very amateurish. It's like someone who play some a number actor forgets the lines and they just go, ah, that's not the line, is it? Yeah. Uh, I, won't, I won't carry on. I'll just pull a face. <laughs> oh, very dear. So, um, yeah, that match was what it was. Uh, what was next? Uh, Crimson Eric Young was the next matchup. After uh, Matt Morgan got attacked, which is apparently riding him out of, uh, riding him out. Of yeah. the company. So, so and that happened on on Impact apparently. I don't know what happened here. He just came out because he's originally supposed to fight Matt Morgan. Yeah, he injured him on television. Yeah. Matt Morgan only has um, limited dates left, so they're writing him off. Exactly. So ODB and you know, Eric Young came out, and uh, they had a bad match. Uh, Eric Young fired up when Crimson attacked ODB. And uh, he still lost anyway, so there you go. Yeah, I see uh, Eric Young is still doing the exact same shtick he was doing when I stopped watching, where he tried to lock up the, with, with the ref as soon as he got in the ring. And <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yeah, but now, he, now he's married to ODB though. Uh, yeah. Different. They, they did have a genuinely great pro wrestling wedding on television. I'm sure they did. It was pretty funny. And uh, Rosita and the other Mexican came out and uh, tried Tried to, <laughs> tried to tempt Eric Young. Eve Torres. And uh, um, and um, Eric Young was like, oh my god, half naked ladies. And um, ODB actually was able to cry on the man, which was pretty, pretty great for, you know, a knockout to be able to do in a stupid comedy segment like that. And it was pretty fun. So yeah, they're, they're actually an okay. They like chemistry. They're, they're okay. Better than Eric Young on his own, I think. Alright. Uh, what was next? Next was uh, Austin Aries, Buddy Ray, in a super match. Oh, I think we should talk. This is the perfect chance to talk about the stupid Twitter thing. They were getting people to send their questions all night to Austin Aries and Buddy Ray for um, on Twitter for the promo. And for Austin Aries, he gave literally like a three-word answer to the question and then segued into his own pre-prepared promo. And uh, Buddy Ray then just cut a promo about how Twitter is for... Uh, fucking little geeks like Borash, not not. It doesn't my words, and um, yeah. So they're they're um, they're becoming as uh, obnoxious as WWE with the old Twitter stuff. But um, uh, this match was well, that's awesome. weird because we were followed uh, in the week by a Twitter account at I am Bully Ray, who is like six hundred followers. Well, that's the official Twitter page of Bully Ray, and I tweeted them. Let me just find what I said here. Hang on. Bully. Bully Ray, by the way, did promote his uh, his MySpace. 
Yeah. At MySpace.com. At I am Bully Ray. Are you the real or are you just a jabroni like no good son of bitch, the ultimate warrior? We never we didn't get a reply. And then I blocked them. Why did you block him? Oh my god, you the square. Ugh. Ugh. Black, black, black. So why are you the count from Sesame Street? One, ah, 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 you little jabroni. Ah, 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 three jabroni. Ah, 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 ah. There are not enough count from Sesame Street references on this show. I did we used to make, I remember we used to make quite a few back in the day. Um Yeah, this was a very good match. I enjoyed it a lot. Big man, small man sort of match. Uh Austin 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 the goddamn worst bump ever. Off the top turnbuckle to the outside into the guardrail. Mm. Because teenage yeah. guardrail is not like the WWE zone with the you know inch the king yeah. padding on it. It's just <laughs> a guardrail. It's old school. And his back was ah, oh, it was all wet. Yeah, his back was destroyed. It was scary. They, they, had, they had an awesome match, and um, the crowd was really into. They're really into areas as well, which is good because um, obviously he has a lot of potential, and it's nice to see that they're actually getting behind him to an extent. Um, so the finish was uh, areas was like. He kept fighting back and he kept fighting back. And the crowd kept cheering for him and eventually, as he promised, he got Bully Ray up for the fattest brain buster you ever saw. <laughs> and uh, uh, Bully Ray kicked out of class at two. And then uh, he tried to power bomb Ares, who turned it into the last chance three for the quick tap out. And uh, yeah, this is awesome. And uh, actually, I hope they have a rematch. Joseph Park was involved as well. Oh yeah, Joseph Park. The greatest the gimmick. The greatest of all time. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. He cut a promo earlier in the evening about how, oh, I'm stuck right here making all my friends here at the Impact Zone. And he looked around and everyone was, hey! <laughs> <laughs> and then he talked about going around the rides and everything. And then Buddy Ray wants to use a chain on Austin Aries at some point in this match. And well, this Trust Park was outraged with this pro wrestler would try and break rules. So he's like, he tried to hop the guardrail and Buddy Ray came over and threatened him and pulled him through the guardrail. And um, Austin Aries made the save. And I threw him back in the room from there. And Joseph Park was very sad on Twitter later to have let his emotions get the best of him. Yeah, it was great. It was great. <laughs> the the brain was very impressive. Yeah. I was like, no way, no way, go and get him up for this. Wow. It, yeah, I mean, you know, one of the biggest brain buster in front of. This was like Goldberg getting the. He gonna get the giant up for the jacket. <laughs> That was the greatest, the greatest brain buster ever in front of 93 people. 100 people. <laughs> um, Austin Aries tore every ligament in it. Well, he might have actually torn every ligament in his back, taking that super bump. But, um, yes, yeah, so this is awesome. Go, Austin Aries. What was next? Uh, another great, 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 great match. AJ Styles, Kurt Angle. Yeah. Well, this was like. It was too, it was too bad that they have the crappy, uh, Dixie storyline going on, and that Kurt Angle isn't really a face or a heel because the only thing missing from this was a bit of heat. So okay, yeah. This is like technically this is like one of the best matches they've ever had with each other. I thought. Mm. Well, when I love matches, they yeah. yeah they've had a lot over the years. When I went see TNA live in two thousand nine, it was made event by AJ Styles Kurt Angle as well. Yeah, the person behind you couldn't see it because you're a fucking shark track. boy. <laughs> <laughs> I had two, I had one, one hand I had my big red foam hand, and the other one I had my shark boy foam hand. <laughs> <laughs> and I had ten hats on. You're, you're, you're <laughs> the foam head. You're the type of person who, people go to a house show, and then they go and they tell their wrestling fan friends, oh god, it's as bad as you might imagine it. I saw this mark there with this oh, awful <laughs> This shit on. Screaming and shouting for, you know, shark, shark boy. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> Why is that for you? That's like that's like cheering for Santino. Um. Well, they had it for sale in the merch stand. I went there and I went, "Oh my god, <laughs> foam shark boy fin!" And I was like, hey, "Give me one of them. <laughs> Give me five. <laughs> and then I had one, one foam thing on each hand. Four T-shirts on at once, I think, because I I bought oh, them all. Oh, I bet you marked out when Earl Hebner came out and did that. You're damn right, I did. Well, he didn't do that, actually. I think this is before what? they started doing that gimmick, yeah. 
Jeez, that's like that's like Rick Flair doing the Flair flop. He does it every fucking house show. Now what happened with Earl Hebner was Earl he he was in the ref <laughs> match between God, I wanna say James I think it was uh Beer Money against I don't remember who, who I don't remember the card exactly. But what happened was he started pushing I think it was James Storm he started pushing. So he took his referee shirt off and started fighting with him. And the other wrestler in the match to put on the referee shirt and became the referee. <laughs> and the <laughs> I think got a three count on who it was. And then the match just continued. Brilliant. Um, actually, the AJ Styles Cordaga match had the exact same finish that they had here for uh, three years later. Those um, those are the rules of pro wrestling. If you wear a referee shirt, you are a referee. And if you don't wear it, you're not one. Yeah. yeah. Like Daniel Bryan, where... He took the referee shirt off now. Now Shaman's going to attack him. Yeah, that was great logic. I think you would have known that. Not take it off. Why did he take it off? So why didn't you just wear one at all times? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Anyway, Corago won. Uh, Kazarian Daniels come out and distracted uh, AJ, which allowed Corago to hit him with the angle slam and then put him in the anchor lock for the win. Stuff and then they, the heels attacked them, and then Carlisle helped them. So that does seem to be where they're going with the tag title uh, dealy there. Probably be a great match. I'd say it probably will uh -huh. be. Yeah, Daniels is really great, by the way. Just yeah, I've everything. never quite wa I've never quite warmed to him, but he's he's good lately. Yeah, no, I'm sort of saying I was well, I when I started watching way back when when I started watching TNT. Um, Daniels was one of the better ones. I never thought he was that strong on promos or anything. Um, I thought he was very good in the ring. But when you see a lot of Daniels, you sort of get sick from him very quickly. Uh, but I'm, I quite like him now. I'm, I'm, I'm on a high with Daniels and Kaz. Um, and then we had the main event. Ladder match. Uh, Robert Rudin and Rob Van Dam. Which I thought was pretty good. Yeah. It was, I mean, the standard is kind of high for ladder matches in this day and age. And I don't think this is one of the better ones, but it was good. I mean, you know, I really nearly died at the end, but he survived, so... It was one of the better, well, I don't want to say better, um, one of the more engaging over the matches I've seen in the last couple of years. Yeah. Um, I think I think with over the you need to have some sort of gimmick, because his, his standard matches are so mundane. Um... And he did take some crazy, some crazy bumps here. There was the one at the end where he tried to do the leap, uh, the springboard onto the ladder, and the ladder fell, and his leg—I don't know what way—was stuck in it, but it twisted it all around. And I was like, "Oh, Jesus! <laughs> what are they doing? That's him out, out for a year now, leg all backwards." But he was okay. I was watching um, Mike Bennett versus Lance Storm from the Ring of Honor show. Yeah. And I was I was kind of thinking how RVD should really be in that kind of spot, like coming back as a as a veteran to work with a mid carder, not main event in the pay per view. Yeah. I mean, I know he's bigger than Storm, but you know he's getting on a bit. He's not that good either, really. No, it's the same same old kind of shtick, isn't it? Yeah. And he, I mean, he was never that big to begin with. I mean, in his last couple of years in WWE, he was tag champion with Booker mm. T. Uh, WWE champion. Well, yeah, for, 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 for a month or so. Yeah. I mean, he never Bong. was. Bong. He was never a real top-level guy, anyway. For the majority of it. I mean, he was very hot when he first came in in 01. Mm. Uh, and then for uh, a cup of tea when ECW came back, but I mean, apart from that, he was sort of mid mid card at, at best, really. Yeah. Well, there you go. There, there you go. go. But this pay um, was really good. Oh, uh, uh, over he took another really stupid bump at the finish as well, where he fell onto a steel chair with his head. Yeah. Got to lose some more of them brain cells. Mm. And the weed and killed him quick enough. And then Robert Roode grabbed the belt and that was it. But there were some nice spots in I, I I wince any time anyone takes a back bump onto a folded ladder in the ring. And Overdy did take took a spine buster onto a ladder. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> Ouch. 
So they, they both survived. It was it was good stuff. Um, it was good. That last storm, uh, Mike Bennett match was, was pretty good too. Ring of Honor put up on their YouTube channel uh, footage of Maria and Mike Bennett on the news, and uh, suck it, suck it, Maria. <laughs> suck it, duck it. They were on like they were on like the early morning news or news or something, and they this footage of like or two of this footage was just repeatedly over and over and over again. Maria and the world's smallest hands. Yeah. She just she does dress like a hoe though. Well that's the point. Mmm. Mmm. I'd still <laughs> tap that big bug hoe ass. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> god. Twitter fangirls. We talked about that last week, didn't we? The bed bug hoe ass. I know your girl. Y'all's nothing but a bed bug hoe ass. Joe, what did you think about the Ring of Honor show? Uh, yeah, it was alright. Bit, bit dull. Bit, um, uh, I'm not really into a lot of sort of stars in wrestling with the kind of Japanese stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, Kevin Steen's alright though. Mm -hmm. I'll, uh, I'll watch Night 2 yeah, and then uh, I'll have Rick Fowler. Is Joe gonna be fuzzy sounding or is it me? No, oh, it sounds okay. No, oh, it's just me then. Um, yeah, I, I, I didn't see, I didn't see the actual show, but I, they put highlights of it, but on the um, like shortened up portions of the matches on the TV show. So I saw the, the Kevin C and El Generico match. Um, not as, not as good as some of the other ones they've had, but it was pretty good. Um, yeah, I like the fact that he's kind of over the top as well. Like he's not. Ultra serious, like he's biting El Generico's fingers and flipping him off and all this kind of stuff. You know. So yeah, uh, what are we do now? Do you want to do emails? Or? Yeah, we shoot emails. I, I just to, to close up TNA sacrifice. I, I would recommend people to check it out for those last three matches. They're really good. Um, and I do think as well that staying away from TNA for so long did help me enjoy it that bit more mm. because it, I wasn't so overexposed to it. He's changed a bit in the meantime as well. Well, Russo's <laughs> gone, obviously. Yes, yeah, so. that was mind boggling. Yeah. Well, there was there wasn't thirty run-ins in the main event, for example. And, it, it, and a Jeff <laughs> a Jeff Jarrett guitar shot. The, there was a time where every TNA main event would have a Jeff Jarrett guitar shot in it. Oh, good old days. Variably, yeah. My world, was, um, my to, to, to talk about one of our favorite things in the world, the um, the um, the YouTube community um, that we've that we've documented so many times on the show recently. There was a great post in that thread this week of this old couple, not old couple, they're like uh, late twenties and uh, they're married. And um, I don't want to say they're hicks, but you know, the wife was wearing a casually and nonchalantly wearing an Impact Wrestling T-shirt like it was no big deal. I used to have a TNA <laughs> Impact T-shirt back in the day. It, it got dyed green, then I throw it away. It's so different from Patrick's Day. No, it's gone. Oh no! Oh no! This this hideous tacky bit of shit is green now. I can't wear it. Oh no! <laughs> but um, this couple got two big boxes from TNA. Shop TNA. Now, all, Shop TNA. Now I, I mentioned to Paul off air. There has been some great new additions to this trade, and if you are listening to this and you are uh, you are an observer subscriber, and you're not keeping up with this trade, you are wasting your money. Go there now. Uh, this video, these two people, they get these two massive boxes from TNA, okay? And they open one of them up. One of them was a guitar signed by Jeff Jarrett. Oh my God! Okay? I don't know. How, this must have cost hundreds, right? The other <laughs> one, which <was> what <laughs> cents, hundreds, pennies. <laughs> <laughs> the the other one, which I know did cost, I think, a hundred dollars, right? Was one I don't know if you saw this video months ago. One of those hideous Velvet Sky skeleton sketches. They got some artists who draw celebrities. As I heard about these. And they they celebrities, I think they're called. Yeah, a, a Velvet Sky signed celebrity sketch for like a hundred dollars. It's the most it's the most hideous shit. Oh my god. It's, it's literally just like a sketch of a, one of 
her photo shoots, like a picture of her from like TNA.com, but it's kind of done, it's like a little cartoon where she looks like a skeleton, like it's like a Halloween, it's like something WWE would be She looks like Angelina like. Love then. <laughs> it looks like something WWE.com would do on Halloween, they'd put up a skeleton version of their wrestlers. It'd be the awful tacky shite and it cost them like a hundred euro, so a hundred dollars even. So yeah. So, I think um, that's one step there. Like, I mean, fair enough if you're a big wrestling fan and you're buying all the DVDs that come out. You know, I wouldn't do it, but I can I can see, okay, if you're that big a fan, you buy all the DVDs, fair enough. Buying tat like that, spend, spending all, spend all my paycheck on, on the Velvet Sky, scared and beaten. Hurt, hurt. You, or a replica belt with a Velvet Sky nameplate in it. <laughs> That sort of, oh, that's, one of the, that's sort of stuff I can just not understand. One of the greatest entries in that thread is just this little, you might, you probably have seen this one, Paul. It's a little eight-year-old kid, or eight or nine-year-old kid, a little black kid, right? And he's just a, a very normal, very normal kid. He's like, he's like oh, hi, YouTube, I uh, got a box uh, here open, so a wrestling belt. I know what this is going to be. So, so he, he opens the box anyway, right? And he's got, it's a big, it's one of the big, Proper replica belts, right? Yeah, and it's in it's in a WWE protective case. And you're thinking, so is this going to be like this going to be the smoke and skull belt? He's the back of the belts. He's the back of the belts of the camera. So, you can't, so he's admiring it, and he goes, and let's have a look. And he turns it around, and it's the fucking Divas title that he's bought. <laughs> And I think he said like Michelle Boole on it or something like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. This was one of the proper like three or four hundred dollar replicas, and this little eight year old kid bought one. And it was the Thieves' like, Belt as well. Oh, he was so happy to have it. I was like, oh my god. So yeah. I, when I was little, I wouldn't even buy the um, like the wrestling, f- the women wrestling figures. I think I have one. I think it's Stephanie. I think that's that the, Stephanie McMahon's the only one I had, I think. I just wouldn't buy any of those. Didn't like yeah, it. I didn't even have Lita. No, no didn't, want didn't want him. Didn't want him. I only did the men once. <laughs> yeah, so if, if I if I wanted a woman, what I'd do is I'd just I'd sort of, if I want Trish Stratus, what I'd do is I'd just sort of pretend my Chris Jericho figure didn't have a beard and I'd be like, that's close enough. She should go topless. Yeah. So, um... So, um... See <laughs> what I'd realise, so... <laughs> this is... I was gonna pretend you don't have a beard. <laughs> Go to cinema. <laughs> Lordy, Lordy, Lordy. Oh, yeah. Did you see? Actually, this is a really cool moment. Actually, one of the one of the most recent posts. You know that awesome picture, that like classic wrestling image from last year of Punk going over the guardrail with the title and blowing a kiss. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, money in the bank. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know the derpy young fella next to him? Um, I could would probably know it if I saw it. I'll look it up now. No, you you know straight away. It's like he's got braces and he's putting a ridiculous yeah. face. Like um, I don't know what, but he's just you you will know it exactly when you see it. Anyway, yes, hang on. that guy that guy is one of the YouTube collector uh, people. I have it here. Hang on. Which guy do you mean here? Oh, the guy beside him with his neck at like yeah, a forty-five yeah. degree angle. <laughs> <laughs> Looking all shocked. Yeah. Yeah, so we we found his YouTube channel, oh, and he has he has he has a lot of he has a lot of replica belts and stupid stuff like that. But he does have some genuinely cool things. Like he's, he's one of those people who will go to pretty much every pay per view. Like he has chairs from being in attendance at like almost every pay per view from 2010. He's got uh, you know some things that I actually wouldn't mind knowing, like posters from the pay per view signed by the wrestlers, and you know those plaque yokes where you get like um. You can buy for like 200 bucks. You can buy a bit of the ladder the Miz climbed to get the briefcase, and it's signed by the Miz. And it's you know, little bit, I would I would never spend that much money on him. But if somebody bought me like you know, here's a framed bit of Layla's knickers signed by a by her, you know, <laughs> you can have that. Right? You know what I mean? So he has all these. Like, has <laughs> no, I don't know what to mean. Go on. <laughs> but anyway, and name play on them. <laughs> <laughs> Try that right in the bin. So um. So he has anyway. He has like almost every plaque that company has put out. He's got like three Undertaker ones. It's like where he must. His parents must be rich. You know what I mean? I never got the appeal of those plaque things either. Yeah, I don't think we do. 
Well, fair enough. If you have, if you have the money to get them, good on you. <laughs> you know, well, this is your parents. You have not earned it. You bastard. So, do you want to do emails? Yeah, I'm sorry, my, my connection is sounding very bad again. Do I sound okay? Yeah, I sound fine. <laughs> okay, well, must, I don't know, because you two are coming through fuzzy. But I'll just read my emails anyway. Okay. First one, oh, there you are, your friend. Uh, this one's from Corey. Oh, my God. It says, big show, oh, preview, preview of the Raw review, everyone. From Corey, he says, big show's baby fest. <clears throat> he said, I watched with a good friend of mine on Monday, something that was both amazing and hard at the same time. I've listened for some time and absolutely agreed when it, when the mentions of Kane and Big Show as dead weight. So when Big Johnny made a fool of Big Show, I was a huge fan. However, I can't help but feel like it was a wasted segment. A young, talented heel should have gotten that heat and done much more with it than Lauren Iris. I understand that for the angles to be effective, that it has to be an authority figure to fire Big Show, but I feel that I feel a bit off about it overall. Seeing Big Show's pathetic face crying, however, made my eyes, and I really hope he is done because he's nothing but boring and useless for some time now. Keep up the great work at Chair Shops. Thank you, Corey. I disagree with your vitriol towards the Big Show. I like the Big Show. Within the context of very large, fat people, he's pretty good. Mm, is he? Better than Kali. Kali's on that foot. Better than Viscera. There are other big fat people. Mark Henry. Vader. He's not in WWE. Bring him back, Dad. Yeah, bring him back. But, uh, Corey, we will not go in depth on that, because I can assure you we'll be discussing it later. So, this one is... Oh, God. This one is from... Prawn Michaels. Right. <laughs> 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 There's the name of this week's show, so. And the title is Help. <coughs> <laughs> it says, Barry, and there's no capitalization, it's terrible. I am a wrestler stuck in the body of a prawn. You're a What a liar. That is the greatest opening line to an email ever. <laughs> it's a Jerry the King prawn. Uh, if you what? could be a animal, what one would you be? Animal. Which would be and why? I would not suggest. <laughs> I would not suggest prawn as this is a living hell. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, prawn, formerly Sean. That's brilliant. Uh, well, prawn. Um, if I was going to be an animal, I would like to be a bear. Because uh, our bears are like the animal I would most like to hug, and if I was one, I could then do that without being weird. All right? What about you, lads? Um, I'd be a CM skunk. Ooh. <laughs> Good one. Oh. Oh. I'd be a, I'd be a, uh, I can't be arsed. Go on, Paul. I will be... Rick Bear! <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> he's, he's dirtier than the average bear. Oh, God. <laughs> Let me think. I will be... Um... Uh, God, I've been put on the spot here. Just pick an animal. Oh, um... Oh... Next name oh, I have... Fuck you. <laughs> James Harrod. Tiger Alley Singh. <laughs> no. J J Jushin Tiger. <laughs> there we go. Big Sloth. No, he, 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 he picked Juice and Tiger, that's okay. Yeah, but a lion is an animal, it doesn't really work. Go on. Yeah, actually, yeah, he's right. Okay, but fuck that, you got it wrong, Paul. Okay, you dropped the ball, you suck. Oh. Okay. This one's from James. It says, hi, Barry. How do you know? Oh, oh, yeah, by the way, this is called Girls, so you know... I'm a be rhino. <laughs> that, that doesn't work for the same, more obvious reason than Juice and Liger doesn't work. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, if his name was like Ron, and he goes, I'll be the Rono, that might work. But it's Ron not. Van Lamp. <laughs> oh, okay, listen. Um, 
Brody, 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 Brody flee. That's good. There we go. That works. I'll be a flea. Okay. John so, Fleena. No, that doesn't work. Cause, cause, cause Fleena isn't an animal. <laughs> oh, <move up. laughs> so anyway, this is from James, it is titled Girls. <clears throat> I don't know why he sent this to me, but anyway. Hi Barry, have you noticed that the Tumblr wrestling community is mostly made up of girls? Well, it, I, even I know that that's mostly the demographic of people who use that website. But anyway, I mean it makes sense, hunky dudes in pants equals female interest. Well, that's a very backwards homophobic idea you have. <laughs> But I still find it odd that girls can be as stupid as guys in terms of liking what can only be described, even by fans such as ourselves, as really fucking dumb, at least at times. My fiancé seems to be becoming one of these fangirls. She'd never seen a match until this year's Mania, but now she's bought aged t-shirts, DVDs, and tickets to live events. Fucking hell. I wouldn't mind so much, but were it not for the fact that she marks out for it... Wait again. I wouldn't mind so much, were it not for the fact that she marks out for... Um, everything. Zack Ryder does a drop kick, drop kick. Ah, I assume that's his girlfriend marking out. Uh, he just typed ah here. A H H H H H. Well, then, unless he stubbed his toe as he was typing. Yeah, either that or it's like Zack Ryder does a drop kick and I punch my wife <laughs> for being inappropriate and making noise while I watch Raw. Kelly Kelly points. Ah, stop it, James. No, that's not what it says. Um, big, big show gives a Wait, yes, another hat. Ah, you get the picture. I do get the picture. Uh, is there any way to make her more jaded so that she'll sit through Raw and SmackDown as begrudgingly as the rest of us? Thanks, James. Well, James, I'm very much the opposite of you. Um, I enjoy... I don't have a fiancé. Who... <laughs> yeah, okay. I don't have a fiancé e either. But I enjoy watching wrestling with people who enjoy it more than I do. Well, depends on, what, on what they enjoy. Well, no, no, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Yes, it I does. Imagine, I can imagine you being so What if they like that John Cena loser promo? Yeah, I can imagine. I'd, I'd get a force over that. Turner, Turner going over to some little kids at, 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 a, at a house show in Cena here, pulling out some statistics, excuse me, and have you know that John Cena has made events some of the least more people use all time, right? That's your hero, right? So I hope you know, even though you like him, he is a failure, alright? And by the way, see the way he sort of tucks his head in before he hits the ground? Yeah, it's fake, okay? <laughs> right? Everything everything you believe is a lie, right? Bye. Yeah, continue cheering, I'm gonna sit back here and sit on my hands. Is this Joe Tanner in his WWE Universe cap? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That bit's okay, though. Um, but yeah, I don't know why, I, I think you should be relishing this, James, because would you rather, would you rather someone else in the house be a sort of grumpy and unhappy while wrestling is on, as you say, or, you know, I don't know, I just enjoy it when I'm watching wrestling with someone who loves it, you know, I, I, get, I, I did find it amusing when I went to that house show, and there was little youngsters who seemed genuinely, this is the peak of their life to be watching live wrestling, even though they were marking out for Santino, <laughs> It's like, whatever. Didn't, yeah. Didn't do their thing. I agree. I think you should uh, let people, in, in, you know, enjoy what they enjoy. You know, I mean, sure, John Cena is, is horrible at everything. And sure, they, they might cheer John Cena or whatever. But uh, we were all like that once. We were all Marx. So and I think you have to let them uh, no. let them go through and sort of get try and let their enjoyment of the product rub off on you in any way you can. Otherwise, you just become more and more jaded, and and you grow to hate these <laughs> this person. <laughs> no, just 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 go, let it go with it, James. That's the way. I guarantee, if I was at show, I'd be making more noise than the majority of the people there. I wouldn't like sit on my hands for most every segment, but Cena. That is that do, is true. That that does happen. But apparently, uh, James Cena's fiance is re is responding to everything. To Big Show giving someone a hat. That's fair. that's good then. Yeah. I don't know, yeah, if I had someone like that to watch Raw with, I think I'd enjoy that a little bit more. Yeah, be, thank be thankful that your fiancé isn't scoffing at the fact that you like pro wrestling. But at least you can you can be the person, maybe not to, you know, trample on the parade where they're, you know, they're enjoying, they're, they enjoy John Cena, but you can go, look, look, look when he hits the ropes, look how he puts his one leg up in the air. You're meant to hit, right, you're meant to hit, hit the ropes with your two legs planted on the floor, so he's not doing it right, so that's why you shouldn't hate him. He Here's a Cody Rhodes t-shirt or whatever. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Here's, a, here's, a, here's a 
use the Ring of Honor DVD, bitch. Like how you mold a small child into your own image. Do the same. <laughs> okay then. My next email is from Celibate Dan. Parentheses, anus free all week. I have no idea what that's referring to, but whatever. Um, says, hello Barry. Congratulations on your upcoming birthday you already celebrated. Thank you. I wish I could have been there. Oh, I wonder if it's Johnny. Uh, but I won't be able to make it. I'll send you a gift though. Do you like DVDs? Uh, yeah. This is my question. Hulk yeah. Hogan has Hulk Hogan has already got the blonde California th uh, thing working. Do you think he should go all the way with it and talk like a frat boy surfer douche? As in, nah, brah, you don't want to hash on this mellow. Hulkamania is gonna like totally run wild, dude. Me and my stash are gonna go wild and already all over you, McMahon. Coming at me, brah. Um, I think he kind of does that, but without the stupid accents. Um, would this result in him being perceived as a heel? Also, in the above scenario, why do I have Hulk Hogan fighting this man? And how much would you pay to see that happen? That match, if it happens today on PBV. Yours for the moment, and that's actually from my good friend, Chris. Well, Chris, I can inform you that Vince McMahon and Hulk Hogan actually did have a match once on uh, a pay-per-view called WrestleMania. And, um, not too many people bought it. Yeah, yeah, that was a pretty much a spectacular failure of a wrestling That was when they could both still walk. So. Yeah, which is not the case anymore. So, as for Hulk Hogan... Um, Nowadays it would be, it'd be a stretcher match, except they both come in on stretchers, yeah. instead of going out on one. So, uh, I'd pay to see that. The, uh, as for the way he talks, he kind of does try and contemporize it. Sound a bit more, sound a bit less perfect the way he talks, but no, he'll, he'll never not be Hulk Hogan. Um, so yeah, thanks for your email, Chris. This one here is from, it's my last one. I got a lot this week, obviously. It's from Michelle. It says, hi lad, would you ever give up drinking for Lent or something? Hmm, <clears throat> what are you having for dinner? Who would you invite for dinner? <clears throat> I would not give up drinking for Lent because God doesn't exist. Um, <laughs> you go right in with that one. No. Um, oh God, okay, go on. And no, I wouldn't give it up for anything else. When I, when I first saw the opening sentence, I thought it was going to be, would you ever give up drinking for a lady? But I wouldn't do that either. Well, it's Layla. Well, it depends. Why, why, why does she want me to stop drinking? Because she's straight edge. Mm. Or maybe because well, you, maybe you're an abusive drug. <laughs> <laughs> you, you I mean, right. uh, if I'm not, if, if 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 she's straight edge, how am I going to get her drunk enough to go out with me? I don't understand. No, but she's up for it, mate. Yeah. So, well, that answers that answers my who would I invite for dinner. Uh, thing. I mean, also, not to make fun of her, because I love her, but Leila tweets a lot about being single, to the point that it's almost weird. She, she's trying to send you a message. Yeah, she's dropping hints, Barry. Yeah. She's not sending them to yeah. me, though, is she? She's sending them to her, her million followers or whatever. Well, you're one of them. Mm -hmm. yeah. She doesn't, make it, she doesn't want to come off as needy, Barry, and obvious. But see, I don't want her to use me to get back at Cody Rhodes, you know what I mean? It's kind of like, <coughs> he, got, he got Eden style, she got me, you know? That's that's something of a trade-off. Anyway, what am I having for dinner? Uh, I had a, a Sunday roast uh, beef and uh, what's it called roast buds. So um, uh, so yeah, I I didn't quite lay it around for Sunday roast and a conversation, but I thought it's more. Um, and those are all my emails. Thank you, everyone. I appreciated having so many. Okay, I can go next. I have three. <laughs> First one, this may explain one of Barry's ones, because I did get this earlier in the week. Said it to uh, Chris, and he seems to have sent a similar thingy bob. So this comes from Queer Dan, the anus man. Uh, and he says, subject, anuses. Uh, hi there, sexy lads. I'm a young homosexual man, and I would like to know the following from each of you. Uh, then he has four questions about anuses. Circumference, unstretched, stretched, favorite object to insert, bleached, unbleached, and how deep are you willing to take uh, a knob? Thanks. Please answer these. Or be or didn't even read this. I wonder why, Queer Dan. So that comes from Queer Dan, the anus man. I actually don't know the answer to <laughs> the first three questions. Uh, well, I know the answer. 
circumference don't know. Probably very, very... If you were to draw a dot with a pen Imagine on a piece of paper... a, a five-pence piece. Uh, <laughs> you're in the right, right order. Um, what is your favorite object to insert? Uh, I will say a rake. Unbleached and big knob. There you go, then. There's your answers. Happy now. CSP. Doing things Orby or refuse to do. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm so glad you read that. So yeah. so. Is that Obi or Kenobi? Yeah, let's see. <laughs> 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 so that comes from Daniel <laughs> Collier, C O W -L, L I E or 1990 at uk. Sign him up to the, um, the mo most spam porn, whatever. For, for, <laughs> for sending in bad emails. Next one James Harrod. Subject, Big Show. Hooray! Big, <laughs> big, um, I, I, I did miss Corey's email to Barry because I did run out, run out to the toilet, but I, I heard the start that it was about Big Show, so. James says, a Big Show needs to stop crying like a fucking baby. It's okay on occasion to show him crying. I get it. He's meant to be a gentle giant and not a monster. But now it's getting silly. It seems like every time anything bad happens, he cries. Why it not, is on occasion, you fucking idiot. Why not just punch Johnny idiot. Ace in the face? Or at, least, <laughs> or at least chase after him rather than what just standing the there crying. It makes, what is wrong with your perception of time, listener? It makes it hard to take his crying seriously when he does it all the bloody time. Thanks, Sorry, James. P.S. Shut up, Barry. Thanks, James. P.S. I hope this one's readable. This one is perfectly readable, James. Uh, we'll be talking about Big Show when we get to Raw. Uh, but I like that you've angered Barry so much. It's made me very happy. <laughs> so Put a fucking burger in it, vegan. Oh, he's having a go now. <laughs> I like how Barry is so upset about defending Big Show crying because he cries a lot himself. And he can, yeah. he can relate to the gimmick. <laughs> <laughs> right, next one. <laughs> uh, finally, email comes from Michelle. Jeez, we've we a lot of emails. I have this fear that Joe will have none, and we'll we'll be all sad. Um, Michelle says, uh, "What was the highlight of your week at work? Did anything interesting happen?" Um, let me see. For those unaware, I work at Hewlett Packard, uh, one of the biggest computer companies in the world um, doing t uh, tech service for Belgium and all that did anything happen this week? No because uh, we don't get any calls ever and I just spent the whole day either sleeping uh, in the IRC here, the chat room with uh, Townie and all them uh, or eating popcorn um, although something did interesting did happen because uh, Thursday was a bank holiday in Belgium and so was Friday so on Friday the team leader said if you want to go home just go home so I just took a half day and just went home went <laughs> and slept slept at home instead of sleeping <laughs> at work <laughs> so there you go interesting my job is very easy it must be said I get paid quite a lot of money to do very little so yeah. that is the advantage of learning a different language people you get these kind of jobs um, because my work is all through French obviously uh, but that's my emails. Thanks, Michelle, James, and Queer Dan for. Oh, thanks, thanks, da Damien and Sandow. What's the advantage of learning, folks? <laughs> <laughs> James. Um, I got one from James the Vegan. Um, uh, he says, "Hi Joe, have you seen any good DVDs recently? Specifically wrestling. But if you don't have to talk about films, that's cool too. I watched Edges one, and while the biography bit is good, the match selection is lacking." probably because there's already a three-disc set that covers everything. Anyway, I hope you're having a good evening and that Paul and Barry haven't abused you too much for being so awesome and that. Uh, okay, thanks, James. Sure. It does say that. Uh, no, what does it actually say? Awesome. I, um, <laughs> James, email us, tell him what it actually said. I haven't bought any DVDs in ages, actually. Wrestling or otherwise. I just said the download stuff now. So. Oh, that's illegal. No, I pay for it, innit? I doubt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, what I'd recommend is just download yourself some free stuff. Thefts! <laughs> 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 yeah. Cheaper and it takes up less space. So, there you go. I bought a Blu ray the other week. What was it? It was Take Shelter. 
and it was very good. And I also bought Monsters, which I've not watched yet. And I watched Alien today, and that's very good. To get ready for Prometheus, because I've already seen Alien, but I want to do a refresher. Oh yeah, I need to. Yeah. The only one I haven't seen is Alien Resurrection. I've only yeah. seen the first two. Apparently, three and four are awful. Yeah, three was absolute dog shit. Apparently, four is worse. So look forward yeah. to that one. But I've, I've seen the Alien vs Predator ones as well. And how are they? So, uh, first one's a bit shit. Second one's worse. <laughs> <laughs> but I like how you want to watch the one in between. Yeah, well, I said one I haven't seen, so. Right. You know. Might as well watch that one. Well, I've seen all the Predators as well. The first Alien and Aliens are both brilliant. Mm, yeah. So I need to go see Prometheus and get it all. I am not on the Prometheus hype bandwagon. Well, have you seen Alien, Barry? Yeah, of course I've seen Alien. Well, well, are you not psyched up to see it then? Uh, yeah, I'm not saying it's not good. Alien is not good. I'm not saying Prometheus is probably worth it. But look, I'm not like everyone else in, for example, the film thread who just, you know, Go mental at the side of a, you know. Naming no names. Yeah, but, but you know, who get bitch. excited? Who get excited at the premise of you know? Sparky boy. I'm just going up of what I saw in the trailer, which did not look like something I had to go to see at midnight, which I believe some people are doing. Oh, that's you know? stupid. Oh, no, I mean, look, I'm like, I, I didn't even do that. Some people queue up to my iPads. Just wait for three hours. What will they <laughs> get them the next day? What's the difference? Yeah. Jesus. I can't remember what, what was the last film I was reading. I guess I haven't been amazingly excited to see a film since Dark Knight. And even then, I went like two days after it came out or something, you know. Yeah, I, I'm probably won't see Prometheus for about two or three more, like at least probably a week or two after it comes out, so. Because I don't, I don't like going to a packed cinema. I don't like someone sitting yeah. beside me at cinema. What was the one I've seen the other week? I went to see, um... Cabin in the Woods. No, it wasn't that one. It was one after. Uh, what did I see? I don't remember. What's this? Cinema? But someone was sat. Oh, it was Avengers, of course. Um, it had this big fat woman sat beside me, and every any time I went down to get my big giant uh, coke, uh, I'd, my hand would touch her leg, and she'd look at me all angry, <laughs> like I would anything at you, you fat mess. As I ate my large coke and large popcorn combo. And your five euro hot dog? No, I only get the <laughs> co coke and the popcorn. That's like a ten euro on its own. Jesus yeah, the same in England, but cinema yeah. prices here are absurd. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I almost look more forward to the cinema or the popcorn and coke than the actual film. So. Me too, actually. I'm always so happy about getting the big popcorn and the coke <laughs> when I go to cinema. Well! Uh, any other emails, Joe? Yeah, more from Michelle. Uh, what do you do to stay fit? Also, how are you so cool? <laughs> uh, <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on. You stop reading not the emails, Joe. Do you think you and Paul will bring back footy radio? Okay. Um, what does it say? It didn't say cool. No, it does. Not sure what did James one really say? Don't worry about James. <laughs> <laughs> Faggot. <laughs> Oh, James goes with fucking spinach, you know, shit. Oh, um, what is happening? What is happening? You're trying to get rid of our only listener. Um, stay fit, I walk and run. That's about it. Occasionally lift some weights, you know. Oh, man, you should see me at the gym lately. Keep the guns oh. pumped. Oh, my God. Um, 45 minutes on the bloody bike machine. 11 kilometers I did. Wow. Bloody hell. Bloody hell, Lashley. Um... I'm cool because probably I just naturally. Oh Christ! And Why Paul, Paul and myself bring back Footy Radio, not in its old format because that didn't work whatsoever. <laughs> um, That's true. I was thinking about doing a, a special series of podcasts for the European Championships. Maybe bring on some of the other football fans from the forum. Uh, maybe do like a weekly one, just looking back at the thing. I don't know. It might happen. Might not. Well, you can you can organise that, sure. Yeah, but we're not going to involve you anyway. So, ah, uh, mm. Tony and Tony for your radio by the sounds of it, and Caster or whoever. Fifteen yeah. time one, get him on. Uh, right. Are there, uh, sorry, are there any likable football fans on the forum? Me. Or is just me. Okay, <laughs> well, then you two then. Gents, uh. Jake, who hosts the uh, uh, Hot Tires. Shit. No, Jake. Good. 
Uh, that's about it. Crony. Oh, Alex God. Crone. That's his name. The Crone Bamberg. Um, so yeah, I, I like Twitter radio and I don't like football, so. Well, maybe. Let's see what we can do. So, oh, sorry, if you're so busy that you can't do it. I, I, I actually know. am, Barry. So, don't be giving me that go. Don't be giving me that go, lad. <laughs> it's busy. How about how about this? The twenty minutes to waste watching the Simpsons every week. Do for the radio one. Well, Simpsons finale tomorrow anyway, so that'll save me a bit of time. There you go. Yeah. Family guy. That Family that finale is also tomorrow. Whatever. The point is, okay, your your schedule is freed up. Put your radio. Let's go. Well, I have to watch uh, some of the DVDs about. I have to buy, watch Twin Peaks and Rest of Development. We'll try and sort something out. Nothing's, nothing's definite, though. We'll see what we can do. I like the way he said he was busy, as though, like, you know, I have to watch Arrested Development on DVD. Yeah. Yeah, but to see, Barry, that's the thing is, right, I'm also the one who's going to end up having to edit and upload the show every week, and that's a pain in the arse. Nah. That takes about two hours to do. Nah. nah. What do you do with it absolutely does. <laughs> No, no, you you could do CSP this week, Barry. You you upload no, no, the, the no. every three, edit it, and then upload the the artwork no. and everything. Go on, go on. Let's see what you can do then. I have a genuine reason. Huh? I have a genuine reason not to do that. All right, well then, give us the catchphrase then. We do raw. No, we'll go to the news. Oh Jesus, there's news as well. Christ, <sighs> go on. Fucking hell. Fucking hell. China's um, dead. China's dead. Apparently. <laughs> China's collapsed. She collapsed no, like not, ten not the times. Communist government. The um, <laughs> the ugly she-he wrestler thing. <laughs> Whatever that yoke is. Mm, she's a porn star now, apparently. Ugh. She collapsed. She she the images of her as she Hulk. Yes. No. I did. Mm. If they did such a lackluster job. Getting well, pounded. Oh, what's God. what's the way I can put this delicately? They did a lackluster job of um. Properly painting her asshole green. <laughs> <laughs> How big was it? Was it like... <laughs> <laughs> it was about First the footprint of a bowling ball. Size of a one euro? So of cool, anyway. <laughs> it, it was, was like a snooker ball. ball. <laughs> it was a... Oh god, it was like an iPhone. <laughs> what? <laughs> Stretched out and all the... Rectangular. The serious voice coming out of it. <laughs> The X Park hidden in it. <laughs> she has been trapped. Oh, God. <laughs> so yeah, uh. she passed out of the X Park three times, I think, with this Warhammer Slam. She passed out of that, yeah. yeah. Uh, what else happened? Barry, you've got very quiet, I was You hearing that, Joe? <laughs> yeah. Okay, hang on, how about now? Yeah, it's better. What else happened in the news then? Uh, oh, it's going to be three hours! Oh, Jesus Christ! All the news! Um, people, we might not be doing Raw anymore on Chair Shop Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> because Raw is going to be three hours long each and every week. When was the last time they did a three hour Raw that wasn't just dreadful in every way? I'm not sure. Uh, what about the old school one? Yeah, but. Oh, yeah. That was good, okay. But they're not going to be doing a special themed yeah, okay. one every week. Yeah, I mean, just okay. a three hour Raw. Never. The last one they did was the one with the CM Punk, um. Alcoholism, uh, drunken. Punk. Yeah, the, um. Sobriety Test. Test. And yeah. that Raw was so bad. And they're doing three hour ones. Because, I mean, Raw this week, the segments were so long anyway. How do you go to stretch out even longer? Yeah, well, when when we started with the brain split was because they had so many, so much talent, they needed you know the extra time. But now they have no talent whatsoever. They don't even have time for a two-hour one. I don't mind the three-hour one. <laughs> Everyone th- makes one of his Dixie Carter when she went like, "We needed these two TV shows and preferably three to properly run a promotion." It's like, bitch, you could you could do a proper promotion with one hour if you were good enough at your job. And now Raw is the supposedly bigger, better company, 
And they're losing the yellow rods. Wow, what is going on? I think Joe took his headset off. He doesn't know how to mute it, though, like I do. Like, I can mute myself, hear what I'm saying, and, like, I can do that if I need to put my headset down. But Joe's amateur! You know? What a geek. Oh, the very definition of geek right here. So, yeah, uh, Raw's three hours, and uh, I don't know if I'm going to bother watching when it is. It's... So. <sighs> the thing is, with Raw going three hours... Not only is it the, you know, the time it takes to watch Raw anyway, like, me s finding an hour and a half to sit down and watch Raw is such a pain, because I could literally be doing anything else in the world. And Raw is really dreadful. And you do have these people on the Twitter and whatnot, um, who are like, well, you know, it might not be a bad thing, they could give more, more time to the, you know, the, the cruiserweights, more time to the g get a... <sighs> Get an idea, mate. Th this is not going to happen. There's not going to be yeah, exactly. more time given to good things. You know? If anything, yeah, it would be an extra John Cena promo a week. Yeah, because those three-hour Raws, I mean, sometimes, I think the most recent one, they had some longer matches that were okay. But generally, they don't have longer matches at all. They just have more short, bad ones. Yeah, I mean... But also, like, there's, there's already too much WWE programming, and now it's going to, I mean, it's not going to be just a straight-up three-hour Raw, I think they're doing something, they're going to try and make the first hour sort of different, and so it's not It's not just a third hour, it's going to, there's going to be a bit gimmickry attached to it. I think, but, it, um, I think it essentially would be just a three-hour Raw. Yeah. First, they said, go on. I, I think they said there was, the rumour was they are going to try and do some Cyber Sunday style elements. Well, they said it was going to be interactive and social yeah. media and whatever. The last couple of times they've done that in telly, it's been terrible, because they they put out, like, shite, wacky options instead of, like, actual ones that people might be interested in. Stuff like, you know, blindfold match or arm tight binder or, uh, you know, back match. Yeah, they always do that. The, the one choice that they want you to pick and two wacky ones that would be dreadful. So there's really no interaction. Or interactivity. So yeah, um, not impressed. Obviously, we are uh, not impressed. Listen, I'm going to see how it goes. I know it's a cliche to say, but see how it goes. I mean, if it's still as dreadful after the first, you know, two or three weeks, we can kick it, kick in, kick in the head. Um, three hour. What are they thinking, though? And three hour was because of the first hour. Nori does so badly in the ratings. And Nori drags the rating down even further and my fear is as well that a three hour raw weekly will make Smackdown even more redundant and Smackdown is pretty redundant as it is yeah that's going to be basically yeah that's one thing that we might see more of there's probably going to be even more of a Smackdown presence on Raw now this is an but even with the Smackdown guys all the main storylines happen on Raw Sma like nothing happens on Smackdown mm. there's like no reason to watch it at all Oh, Joe's back. Hey, Joe. Hi. Um, you, you, you couldn't silently sneak out. <laughs> but, <laughs> but if I want to pull my headset off and throw it down, in a rage, I will. Because of Raw going three hours? Yeah. Oh, I see I see the symbolism now. So. I just want to, to, to put my head in the oven. So. <laughs> okay. Fortunately, it's electric, so... Oh, you, oh, your oh, hair oh, is just standing on end. Just, just singed. So, you're looking forward to these three hours, Joe? Yeah, no. No, um, not at all. Because the few good segments that they usually have are just going to get completely swamped by the extra hour. And the other thing is, as well, is whenever they used to do a three hour Raw for like a special attraction, three hour, now they don't have that anymore to even gain interest. Like, oh, they do four hours. Who yeah. was. Shut who wants to see a four hour raw for Christ's sake? But like even when they you know, old school raw, three hour raw, one one week only, blah blah blah. Then you can get you can sort of gain interest. Now it's just oh it's three hours. It's the same when they started doing the super show. Now it's just every week's super show, it doesn't do yeah. gain any interest. And remember then they did uh, Raw starring Brock Lesnar. That only lasted a week. That only lasted about ten minutes. I'm gonna bring that back. <laughs> Clueless, this company. Clueless. Um, similarly, TNA are going to be going live um, from, I'm not sure exactly when the first one is, I believe it is the end of 
you know what to say? I might be completely yeah. off. I'm not exactly sure what it is. Um, yeah, well, it's just through the summer. I don't know what that means. Um, it, I, I guess it means it, they'll, they'll see how it goes, and then if it's not going well, they can change back, and if it does, they'll just say, oh, it's permanent now. Yeah. I think this is a much better idea than Raw going to three hours. Oh, oh, oh. is it? You think? Well, listen. I, you, you've caught me mid-point there, Joe. Um, however, however, uh, li going live doesn't really, I, I don't think, makes it make a huge difference. Um, we've seen <coughs> Ultimate Fighter, uh, which went live this year, although it did actually also debut on a different network. Um, going live really hasn't helped its ratings or anything in any way. But they, also, they also suffer from the whole WD thing of it's very, very, not that it's bad, but very, very played out, been around forever, you know, that kind of thing. Overexposed. The only positive I can see is that a lot of people who don't watch today, I, in my opinion anyway, uh, just read the spoilers and then don't watch it. I don't think, I don't think they're statistically uh, relevant though. Well, yeah, I agree, that's what I'm saying, but I think there, maybe that is the one reason that would make them make this decision. Like, may, I, like just going live to me doesn't make a huge difference, because you, you're only seeing it for the first time anyway. Most of the they'll be doing a show live, they'll be just doing sort of one taping every week, as opposed to doing two or three yeah. in one go, which will hope maybe help the crowd. And right. the other thing is as well, well, yeah, but I mean, on the other hand is... What the product you're going to be seeing isn't going to be the you know edited product with all the botches taken out. It's Garrett Bischoff is going just going to be in the ring live. Yeah, they've done all right before when they went live. Yeah, I didn't mind it when they went live back in the Monday Night Wars back in <laughs> 2010. <laughs> yeah. But um, at, at the same time as well, they were debuting a lot in like you know known phases at the time. This is just a straight switch to. To live again, I guess I'll see how we see how it goes. Um, one thing that's not going to help them is their new executive no uh, knockout in charge. The knockout is Brooke Hogan, brother. I sure that's not going to help because Brooke Hogan will be really bad at it. She'll be the very much the John Laurinaitis of Impact. Apart from that, what? Apart from that, what do you mean apart from that? How do you know she's going to be bad? Apart from the fact that she's awful. I think that's a pretty, uh, pretty big indicator, Joe. Uh, not sure. You think she'll be drawing in those Brock Knows Vest fans? Uh, and all the music fans. All, uh, both of them. <laughs> wow. No, he, no, he means, he means the general fans of the music industry who are going to pay to see her be thrown off the top of a cage or something. <laughs> that would be brilliant. <laughs> she can take that yearly uh, lethal lockdown bump on top of the cage. Oh yeah. <laughs> Team Brook, Team Garrett, brother. Oh God! How long do you think it'll be until? And I'm not saying at the same time, but until Garrett Bischoff is the world champion and Brook is the knockout champion. Um, oh, you think it uh, could happen before the end of 2013? Nah, I don't think it'll happen. Mm -hmm. I think Brook oh, winning the knockout could happen sooner than you think. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, I think it might. Oh, I think she's going to wrestle. Uh, I think you could be surprised. Well, I mean, Eric Young is the current knockout tag champion, so... Don't put anything against him. And he can't oh. wrestle in any of those matches. Because he's a bloke. That's true. I didn't realize a man could hold it, so maybe Brooks got a chance. <laughs> well, um... Didn't Harvey Whippleman hold the WWF Women's title? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's out of China. So there you go. Um, so that's all. That was all. That, all that news dropped in about and within an hour of each other. So yeah, it was kind of it was a crazy time. Our, the CSP Twitter went mental. Twitter.com/slash/chairshotpod. Mm, I immediately went out there. The rage. That's actually where I found out. That, that was the first I saw the news. Was our own Twitter page <laughs> broken? So there you go. Bringing in the new. Um, um, can, I, can I just say, by the way, that, that I think TNA going live is good because it's like uh, uh, I don't know. I think I I, just, I I like the idea of a show that's live versus taped because I just think it does. I, I personally think it makes a difference. And um, I know a lot of people are like, "Oh, it's going to cost them money." But everything they do costs them money, and they get no comeback. 
maybe, maybe being live will make a difference. So, you know, we'll see. I think they'll still be doing 1.1s by the end of the We'll see. I mean, I, I, hope, I hope it works out for them. No harm, no harm uh, them doing well and sort of giving the WWE some competition. Because their, yeah. their ratings are going to be 1.1 <laughs> <laughs> every year at the rate it's going. <laughs> Fallen ratings, brother. And on Spike. Oh, on Spike too. Yeah. There's a very funny story that came out today. Barry, you might have seen this. Uh, if you're still there. Barry! I'm still here. I'm waiting for you to tell me. Go on. That um, former WWE creative writer, uh, Dan Madigan, was interviewed on a podcast recently and revealed that Vince, when Kane was filming See No Evil, Vince McMahon had an idea for the film that Kane's character would whip out his knob and it would be three feet long. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, the story goes um, that this creative writer got a call from Gregory Dark, the director of the film, who said, we got a little problem here. Vince has a suggestion about the movie. Uh, uh, and he goes, Vince wants a scene in the movie where Kane's character pulls out his penis, and he wants it to be three feet long. <laughs> I presume he would have killed somebody with it. But, uh... <laughs> it was <basically laughs> I, I mean, I believe it, you know? Yeah. Okay. So it implies that Kane's real knob isn't that big. Why? Well, three, three, three feet long. Maybe it is. Maybe that's what he's getting at. Kane, you gotta get Kane his three foot knob out in the fiddle. Because God knows you can't do it on Raw. Um, um, also, there's a story in the week that Tara was going to appear in Penthouse. Turns out it was just an interview. Okay. Talk about misleading, uh, you know, advertising or whatever. Yeah, you know, you're, you know, your looks are gone when you just get interviews in uh, dirty magazines. I was, yeah, I thought, did, did she mean uh, over forties, whatever? <laughs> What's she doing in there, man? She shall old, saggy tits weekly or whatever. Um, oh. monthly. <laughs> 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 Weekly would be uh, quite quite a re- frequent production. Um, what else happened in the, in the week? Obviously, the big FCW NXT tapings merger. I want to say almost. Yeah, yeah. That's happened. Um, I guess NXT just features a load of FCW people now. It seems like more like FCW featuring NXT. It really yeah. does. Yeah. But I guess they've promoted some uh they've promoted some NXT guys to SmackDown now with uh Derek Bateman just randomly showing up and mm. Titus O'Neil and, uh, and and Bateman Bateman got squashed and that was the last we saw him. Yeah, but I mean it seems like they've replaced a lot of the NXT guys just with FCW guys now for the tapings. Mm. Uh, I mean from reading the the uh results, you've guys like uh Guys like uh, Husky Harris, who I believe was tweeting Barry during the week. Uh, guys like Seth Rollins. Does he fancy him as well? Like really? He does. Uh, three foot knob, apparently, is what I'm hearing. <laughs> 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 yeah! Shook, 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 shook. What did that gimmick? Look at that three foot gimmick. That's not SpongeBob, is it? <laughs> Speaking of me! <laughs> That's is very small. Um, <laughs> JP, help me! <laughs> Go <Google> that! <laughs> you gonna pick up that three foot knob Kane just gave you? Ten <laughs> uh, <laughs> points if you get that reference that we just talked about. <laughs> Um, we talked about Charlie collapsing a whole load over the weekend. Uh, did we talk about the Ring of Honor pay per view? Was that the week before? Uh, uh, they hooked up again, like I said they would. So. Yeah, the uh, Border Wars, wasn't it? Yeah. People could not watch it because the servers broke or whatever. 
What a shame. Because apparently it was good. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen one, but you know. Spoiler! Um, yeah. I would check it out, but I have neither the motivation or the need. Um, having a look through the news here. Uh, da 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 da. Not a lot, really. Um, other than the big news, obviously, that we already discussed. Uh, what's the name at a um, car accident? Oh, Rosa oh, Mendes. Mendes. Rosa, Rosa Mendes. Yeah. They tweeted a lot about her for some reason. Hurt her neck or whatever. Yeah. Um, oh, my Soro. Soro? <laughs> Neko. Oh. El Neko hurt out. Um, John Cena's wife is challenging the divorce or something. Uh, that's probably all the news. Oh, TNA released uh, Tony Nice, whoever that was. Oh, I don't even know who that is. Some faceless X Division guy, apparently. <laughs> I think he was the guy who looked a bit like Chris Masters. But small. <laughs> oh, he was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so let's just say that's it. There's no more news. Yeah, so the question in everyone's lips is who wants to do war? Uh, I guess I can do war. <laughs> If no one else wants to do it. Pardon? Do you want to do it? Uh, do, or do you want to do Impact? Uh, I'll do Impact then, I suppose. Okay, I'll do it. I'll just uh, get the old thing up. Um, right. <coughs> well, Triple H was back, right? And he's still CLO or something. And he came out and buried Lesnar and said that he didn't need to bring legitimacy back to the WWE because they already had legitimacy like when he wrestled The Undertaker in front of 120,000 people at WrestleMania <laughs> yeah <laughs> and that lion brother Brock Lesnar had offended all the legends like Ric Flair and Hulk Hogan and Bob Backlund and uh, he shouldn't you've offended people like Ric Flair and Hulk Hogan and Rob Van Dam and Garrett Bischoff and Velvet Sky. Bastard. <laughs> he also said the Brock was a quitter. I thought you were going to say he said the Brock was a queer. <laughs> <laughs> I think he kind of did. No way. way. Right. Sort of implied it. Um, yeah, he quit UFC, he quit WWE, and then John Cena beat him and he quit. So this is good. This is helping. Well, again, uh, you know, get Lesnar over as a big draw match. Wasn't drama really. Monster. Like, he didn't just quit UFC because it got too hard. Uh, and he did quit football, which didn't get mentioned. Yeah. And... Well, well, well did you see that they, 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 they want to bury the UFC, obviously. Yeah. Wait, no, they don't. That, that there is a, hmm. Yeah, it's weird, actually, no, <laughs> I mean, he, he got an illness that he almost died from. You know? Mm. And then when he realised he couldn't do it anymore, he, you know, retire. Which, fair enough, he, unless he just wants to get killed every fight he does. You quit, Brack. <coughs> then Paul Heyman came out. Yeah. And served a writ against uh, WWE for wrongful termination, blah blah blah. We had a ten minute discussion about the uh, law. litigation in this uh, instance and uh, employment contracts and uh, law. Uh, several hours later, <coughs> Paul Heyman threatened to sue Triple H for putting his hands on him. And that was about it. I did not realise that all this legal mumbo jumbo is, is just incredibly boring and no one cares about it. No, I think they think people like it. Well, how? I don't know. This is the same story. Like, Paul Heyman's delivery was great. Triple H was quite good. But who cares about this? Who cares about... I'm, I'm suing you, Triple H. Fight each other. No one cares about suing each other. God. Yeah, it's, it's just so the whole basis of pro wrestling. Like, uh, Paul Heyman being back feels so not special because this is what he's doing. Mm. The one thing that was good was when Triple H grabbed Paul Heyman. He's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah, 
yeah, that he came off as such a little greasy weasel. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, opening match for the tag match: CM Punk and Santino against Daniel Bryan and Cody Rhodes. Uh, yeah, good, good tag match. No, not to it. The thing is, and I know it's it in in 2012. It's not a thing to get annoyed about. But this was the WWE champion, the US champion, the IC champion, and the number contender for the WWE title mm -hmm. in the opening match on Raw. Not even the opening segment, just the 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 match that no one cares about. Yeah, it's a bit worrying. Um, well, it just shows that. Uh, I mean, it's a it's, it, it is a cliche to say that the titles mean nothing, but they really do. <laughs> you know. Yeah, but wait a minute, because Big Show's got to apologise to Johnny Ace. Oh, tch, tch, oh Christ. Okay. Get to that. So, so yeah, good match. Um, see if I'm going to help. Your voice yeah. going, Joe, is it? <coughs> um, brother. Um, see if I'm going to end up pinning Cody. Uh, they did a cool, good spot with Santino went for a hot tag. <laughs> yes. But kind of dived and landed flat on his face. It was quite funny. He came up short by about a yard. Mmm. Uh, in the next match, Beth beat uh, Alicia Fox. The finish was good as well, though, we must say, before you move What on. was it? Uh, well, Santino was on the ring apron with the Cobra puppet on his hand, or whatever. Yeah. And Cody went into the corner, and Santino threatened, and he <laughs> left, nearly leapt out of the way of it, right into the GTS. And uh, good. Good. good stuff. Good, good match. Uh, yeah. So, well, Romania gave it three and a half stars, though. Excessive, isn't it? Yeah, just give it three. The half star. Oh god! <laughs> what are you joking? I'm trolling, for God's sake. Um, <laughs> I knew yeah. if I would hate that. <laughs> Women's stuff, that was whatever. Then. I, I, don't even, I have no recollection of this. They had the Kaisha Fox? What? When did that happen? Yeah. Sorry, go on. I just. Fox wasn't there, was she? Beth and Layla? No, they, they didn't wrestle with anything. Layla was there. Oh, Alicia Fox. Yeah, okay, yeah, I remember. Yeah. I have no idea. All, all I remember was, was, was lovely, sparkly hot pants. That's all I remember. <laughs> Is that what you don't remember, remember watching, watching this? <laughs> yeah, that's what. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I was wearing, yeah, well done. Victor vs. Kane. Um, Ace and Otunga came out. Um. This was exactly what you'd expect from a Big Show vs. Kane match. How Kane many ended up winning. How many times do we have to have Big Show vs. Kane or Big Show know. and Kane vs. I don't know. Every year since 1998. 1999. <laughs> um, don't want to get it wrong. <coughs> Kane chokes on Big Show to win the match. Well, did he though? Oh, did he? Well, no, Kane. Big Show went into ropes and Kane put his hand on Big Show's. You know, neck. And then Big Show jumped up in the air and just fell. He was, he was still running when he took uh, the bump. That's a joke, Sam. No, but Kane didn't lift him up. <laughs> There's no point where Kane picked up the Big Show. Big Show just <laughs> ran into Kane's hand and fell. It was it was almost more that's a close line than it. That's enough to send him down. Well, it, it, there was no slam bit. It was, it was a choke fall. Choke push. Choke push. <laughs> yeah. Choke block. <laughs> So then Ace got in the ring, and this is the uh, contentious segment of the week. Yeah. Um, <coughs> get ready here. Uh, Big Show made fun of his voice, and Johnny Ace had demanded him to apologise. But then he essentially was going to fire him anyway, and demanded that Big Show beg uh, to keep his job. And Big Show did just that, and was, was in tears, crying, incredibly upset at the idea that he might be fired. And, um... Uh, Johnny Ace said it didn't matter, he was going to fire him anyway, then Big Show got down on his knees and, and begged and begged and said, please don't fire me. And uh, Johnny Ace said it anyway. Big Show just wept. What a great segment. <laughs> right, go on Barry, let's hear it. Go on. Right. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know what you expect me to say. Big Show is a directionless old guy who's not doing anything but is very over at the same time and Johnny Ace is the is, as lame as he is he's the top heel pretty much on Raw right Who's, who has a main event at the next pay-per-view and so I thought it was good that they had 
they had him get some heat on someone who's over who the people like, but they didn't sacrifice someone like, say, CM Punk and make him look like a fool. It was the big show who's been around forever and is doing nothing right now. And big show's acting in this segment was, and I, I'm, I'm asking someone to find me a better example here, some of the best acting in pro wrestling in maybe the last 10 years, right? So that's what was great about it. I watched the replay of it on SmackDown today, and it was just as good the second time, right? So, and that's coming, and, you know, yeah, I'm done. Hmm. And Mr. Griffin, your rebuttal? Um, I didn't mind this segment. Um, I know it's going to shock some people because I've been one of the more outspoken people about Big Show uh, crying at the drop of a hat. Um, we do have a friend, uh, the three of us, on the old forum called Liam, who reminds me a lot of the Big Show because he is also someone who will just cry at nothing, openly. But um, this segment started off with, you know, Johnny Ace threatening to fire Big Show and whatever. And Big Show. He was so passionate about WWE that he he was getting worked up and he's you know, getting the the teary eyes and the misty eyes and I, you know I I sort of thought, I thought that was very good because Big Show cares so much about WWE and you know I can relay I can understand what his the character's motivation that he cares so much that he'll be cra- you know get upset about it, threatening to be fired and whatnot uh, and then he just started yeah he just crying like a baby and I sort it sort of lost me a little bit where. Um, I don't know. It's, he just—I realize that the big show is not the. I mean, I, I always say, "Well, Stone Cold wouldn't cry," and I realize that the big show is not Stone Cold and is not in Stone Cold's position as carrying the company as the main babyface, or whatever. But I, I do still think that he—he—he he, he does cry too much. <laughs> you know, he cries quite a lot. That being said, I didn't mind this segment so much compared to other ones, like where he ran into AJ and just started to weep. So, there we go. I don't have a problem with him crying, because it's it's nice to have a character that's, that's a bit more, I don't know, there's, not any, there's no interesting baby faces in WWE. You're right, you're right, you're right. At least he has a character. And Corey, stop being a big meanie. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, I missed this. What did he say about it? He called Big Show a big fat waste of space, was terrible, and said a bunch of mean things. Well, Big Show is terrible, so I agree with that. He's quite a good actor, though, but I, I, I couldn't very happily never see him in the ring again. I hope he is fired, frankly. Well, no, he's just shoot, shoot brother. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, don't know, I just, I just find it hard to cheer for a baby face who is routinely made to look silly and ma- well not silly but made to look yeah made to look like weak <sighs> I don't know made to look that, 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 is, that is put forward in a way where he'll just cry so much and I, I mean the, re- the only reason I use Stone Cold comparison is because Stone Cold was this cool baby face that everyone could get behind because he was so cool and the big show was very much the opposite on the scale <laughs> but that being said I, decided, I didn't mind saying as you said the acting was, was very very good um, not on Johnny Ace's side, but Big Show is, is a good actor. Yeah. I don't think you can hold that against him. I just Johnny Ace was Johnny Ace wasn't terrible, but he did. I think he did flub his lines like he always does. Yeah, so, unfortunately. So so. This is part of the problem for me. Like, like you had one guy who was doing so much acting and wasn't doing it bad. Then you had another guy who can't act whatsoever. So there was just such a disparity between the the two sort of characters that, you know. Yeah. It, it, didn't work for me. I will say this was not the big show the like a, a segment with the big show crying that annoyed me the most. This at least this time he had, you know, a legit reason to cry. I uh, anyway. That's just my opinion. I just this, this this didn't annoy me so much. I sort of I sort of got this one more than other ones. Anti climax of an argument here, I think. Well, that's not really an argument. I sort of agree with a lot of various points this week. Um, that's what I'm saying, that's why it's anti climax. Yeah. Maybe next week when Big Show uh, returns and then his uh, 
one of his shoulder straps falls down and he bursts into tears, then maybe I'll be able to have another little rant on. I mean, so if we were, I mean, or he, he can't worse. tie his bootlaces and he cries. <laughs> <laughs> he could do it worse than it's embarrassing, like he could be caught, like, he caught wanked in or something. <laughs> <laughs> with, his three in, with his three foot schlong. With his three foot schlong. With his three foot Oh god. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, had a match. Somebody call my mama. Oh yeah, this was funny. Straight after that, this basic emotional breakdown. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> he set out the funk service. Somebody call my mama. Somebody call my <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Owen Hard is dead. <laughs> Somebody call my mama. Somebody call my mama. Somebody call my mama. Oh, fuck it. Uh, but even the commentator, even know, Jerry Lawler was like, uh, you know, I normally the fans would be, you know, up and dancing when the fucking sores comes out, but I, I think they're too shocked by what just happened. Uh, why did you bring out for us today at this stage? Uh, 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 ladies and gentlemen, this is not part of the scripted, uh, entertainment tonight, and, uh, we're very sad and mournful to announce that Owen Hart has died. <laughs> Come get on the... Now I think Brodus Clay is the perfect opening match guy, who can come out and th get the fans up and dance and enjoy themselves uh, and have a short match and then bring out the real batch people. I, I oh, he's the perfect, he's the perfect house show intermission guy. <laughs> Maybe the first match after intermission to pick the f crowd up again. Yeah, for, I, want, I want my first match to be really good. I want my first match to be Dolph Ziggler versus Zack Ryder or something. Why would you want Zack Ryder if you're not really good? Because <laughs> they have good matches. Yeah, so Robbie E. Yeah. Robbie E, yeah. <laughs> Robbie T. Uh, yeah, so Clay, Kingston Truth took on Miz, Swagger, and Ziggler. Uh, it was. Mm, nothing to it. Brody's ended up pinning Miz for that win. Uh, Ziggler took a really good bump again. He ran out. He went to the spot where you, kn you knock the guy off the apron. And he jumped yeah. up and just hit Brodus' head and just fell back into the ring. Don't know why Brodus. Hey, he's, he's. If anything, you can say he's very much the opposite of Rob Van Damme, who's a guy in a really you know big spot, on, I guess, in his company, who doesn't care at all. And here's Ziggler, who, no matter what spies in, he'll still you know try and do the biggest bumps and entertain the people. So. Admirable. Good job, Dolph. Uh, backstage, good friends. Alex Riley and CM Punk were uh, having a little chat. Oh, yes. That's surprising. Um, <laughs> <laughs> when AJ interrupted and uh, basically threw herself on Punk. Little hussy. <laughs> <laughs> I've not heard that word in a few years. He, um, he kind of blew her off. She was sad. Oh. She wanted to blow him off. <laughs> <laughs> blow off is also funny because it's a fart. Oh, is it? You blow off, yeah. Um, Chris Jericho and Randy on had a match. It, was, it wasn't as good as you'd expect, probably. No, it wasn't. A bit disappointing. It ended with a DQ. Is this uh, the fourth or fifth straight DQ in this feud? With all the, <laughs> all the matches in this four fail four way build up. Yeah, All DQs. It's, it's always non finishes now. All the time. Um, yeah, Seamus interfered and match ended. Mm. Then made a little stare down. Also, for the majority of people who don't watch SmackDown, this was the go home show for a pay per view. So, this was the go home match for that feud. And mm. the, the opening match was the go home match for <laughs> the, the, the retired match. Yeah, the WWE title one is worst, I think. Oh, it absolutely is. Terrible. Um, in the final segment we've got Johnny Ace and John Cena. Um, this... Oh, I don't even want to, I don't even want to cross you, Joe. Go ahead. I struggled to recap what this was about, really. I, I don't 
not really that sure because it was they didn't really say anything at all until right at the end when a message showed up from the um, WWE board of directors dictating that uh, Johnny Ace would be fired if he lost and that no superstars could interfere or they'd be fired. Before that, I don't know what, I don't know what happened. This was, and this might be a little. I don't even think this is hyperbole. This was the worst segment I've ever seen. Mm, not sure about that. This was worse than Carlito what? chasing Hornswoggle into the the wall and hit, not being able to run through the black uh, archway, just running into the wall, bonking his head, and Ron Simmons coming in and going, "Damn!" This is worse than Mae Young getting her prosthetic uh, boobies out at Royal Rumble. No, this was not worse. It was. Than it was. This was worse. I would rather watch that for the rest of my life than watch this segment <laughs> ever. Again. This is just your average. Not, no, it wasn't as bad as this, this is your life with the wrong. It was. Program. It was much worse. It was much Wait, worse. Was, yeah. Okay. I'm saying. I, oh, we gotta go on a tangent here. I mentioned this on Twitter. That segment was great. No, it wasn't. This was. Listen. Not only was the acting bad, the content was terrible. The big thing at the end where Eve came out made absolutely no sense. Nothing was good in this. This was terrible. This was this was the anti-perfect segment. It was the bad. imperfect was segment. Ah, oh, it, it was. There was no. Everything was wrong with this. Cena, Cena was the worst ever. Wait, loser. Cena was worse than Mr. Kennedy has ever been. Mr. Anderson, whatever you want to call him, worse than he's ever been. Uh, Johnny Ace was terrible. Forgetting his lines every second line. Eve came out with this, uh, the, oh, the go puck yourself line. Christ oh, almighty. Oh, Eve good. comes out with this mandate from the, the board of directors. For, why are they only getting it now at the end of Raw? Why is, and then the, w- what it was was, Johnny Ace, if you lose, you're fired. What sense does that make? If, if they're not happy with the job he's doing, why, why is it, it based on a match he has with John Cena? Why is he fired if he loses to John Cena? <laughs> I think because he put himself in the match, like, they, they're saying if you, you know, if you want to abuse your power, then you'll pay the consequences. Well, why did, when Triple H did it, it was like, if you're going to have the match, you you can't be COO2, and yet you had to quit his job to have the match. It was now, well, if you lose, then you're fired, then, because that's how companies d- direct uh, who can be COO of their company is on a match. Yes, I didn't Teddy Long get fired because he lost the match. Like, it's not a way to We're not disputing that. Yeah, no, but, I mean, even in terms of continu- continuity. Continuity, that's how you say that Continu- word. Continuity. Continuity. <laughs> it makes no sense. And then they're like, yeah, yeah. Nobody's saying it's good, though. I'm saying this was the one the worst John Cena. But I don't think this is worth it. Fucking Captain Jack is lost in the field. Oh God! It w- this was this. Well, listen. I'm not saying it's the worst ever. It's the worst I've. It's the worst I've ever seen. So you have to differentiate between the two of them. But even that. I mean, you you saw Hulk run through a painted on hole in the wall. Yeah, this is worse. Because John Cena did a stupid voice. It wasn't. Oh, it absolutely Ugh. was. It absolutely was. Because, listen, that's Hornswoggle. He's a little... Le- he was a leprechaun at the time. And Jonathan Coachman was chasing him on a bike. Or well, at least that was quick. John Cena here. This is the segment, right? Where, you, you're, if you're watching on your own, you're praying someone doesn't walk through the door. <laughs> and you just go, Yep, this is what I like. This is what I watch. Look at your wanking. Uh, well, that was incidental, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> and wearing hot pants. <laughs> <laughs> Three foot cock, you know. And then a wake up his ass as well. <laughs> Big end up. <laughs> um, this is so terrible. I can't even fairly describe this because I'm so. I hated it so much. The loser stuff. Christ, who can like this? Yeah. If you're If you're listening to the show and you like this, just go. Go take it off. Go jump off a cliff. Because the, the world is better without you. Frankly. I don't know. I think you had to go with me for telling the vegan to eat a burger. Yeah, but... Uh, see, the difference is, I, I quite like James. I don't like people who like this segment. No. 
I like James. I was, I was joking. By the way, where's everyone else you see, man? Where's Will? Where's the two Wills gone? Yeah, they, we got, like, where's Jason? Jason emails. Oh, no, wait. That was James. You got it mixed up. Yeah. Right. Maybe, maybe, um, uh, maybe James is the one. Like, Thomas, like, James, 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 James. What? You're going to quiet again. Remember that contest we did for the demon? Oh yes, that must be why. You've dri driven him away. Oops. This is the sort of segment, right? If this was Mr. Anderson, he would have been mercilessly buried by everybody. Hmm. Nobody's saying this is good though. This was shit. This is one of the worst. Have you had a look at the Twitter feed, mate? People are loving this. <laughs> Monks. Monks is correct. And also the live crowd loved it, and I was just... I could not believe my ears. They didn't respect Leila, and they liked John C. And I just... Fuck that city, wherever they were. Awful. Awful stuff. Yeah, that was wrong. Talk about Smackdown and Impact. Yes. Look, Look forward to that up. next week. Now we'll, we'll breeze through. With another week. hour. Well, because nothing happened on SmackDown. We could talk about that in two minutes. They had <laughs> right, well, that, let me just go quickly to SmackDown then, right? And I, sure. Impact was good. We'll talk about Impact in a bit. But SmackDown, they had like f two matches that were each half an hour long. There was no Ryback, for God's sake. The, uh, right, what happened was Johnny Ace and CM Punk had, a, had one of their token arguments where he calls him a toolbox and nothing happens. Uh... It was a tag match, Truth and Kingston against Titus O'Neil and Darren Young, um, which went three minutes. And the people who they were pushing last week as millions of dollars, millions of dollars, millions of dollars, just jobbed out in three minutes to Kingston and Truth. So there's that feud down the toilet. Um, Damien Sandow walked by Zack Ryder and went, Ugh, stadia. Uh, Damien Sandow then didn't have a match with Tatsu until Tatsu called him a chicken, like in. Uh, Back to the Future 2 uh, and then Damien Sandow Marty McFly him and, and McFly are you chicken McFly and then Sandow ran back and hit him with a, a hangman neckbreaker I don't know why they just couldn't just have a match though also he's got these bright pink uh, oh, uh, tights what was that I don't know that, clearly that's why he wears a robe to hide them um, Daniel yeah, Bryan beats Zack Ryder in two minutes. I don't know what I was thinking with these long matches. These matches are all really short. Uh, wasn't very good. CM Punk. You think CM Punk coming out? This would be a good match. No, he's against Kane. Ugh. Not very good either. They've never had a good match. Yeah. Uh, Kane. Daniel Bryan down. was good though. Daniel Bryan on commentary. Daniel Bryan was good. Yeah, that was good. Um, apart from that, not much to shout to call him, but oh, excuse me. Santino beat Cody Rhodes in two minutes. Good for Cody. That seems like that toilet. Uh, the reason why all these matches were so short, not given any time, was because they had to show the entire Big Show firing uh, <laughs> angle again. Now I counted this up, right? Raw, or sorry, SmackDown in its entirety is one hour, twenty minutes. This segment went on for twelve minutes. Wow. That is, for those keeping score at home, 10% of the entire show. What? What? Yeah, so. That's nice more. 1 out of 20. Oh, sorry, you're right. More. It's 12 out of 80. So. Yeah. That is 15%. Way. Even worse. Tremendous. Um, they showed the entire segment again. Um, Seamus Orton. This was the one that didn't end in a DQ, so I was shocked. This was a good match. It was. It went about 20 minutes, which, you know, mm -hmm. fair enough. This is the only good thing on SmackDown, by the way. And I was sitting, watching this, going, Surely Ryback will come out. <laughs> Surely we'll have some Ryback. <laughs> there was no... no he could be on FCW for no one. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my back on? The shirty can't he be got a, He got a video package. He did. That's true. They were like, D this this guy right back. He he go he go rule the world. I was I was waiting for a ride back. Anyway, uh, Seamus B. Orton clean with a roll up. Would you believe? 
uh, and they know to attack them out too much. So. Or KO out of nowhere. So that was Selectone. Uh, Impact was fine. I guess if you don't want to talk about it, we don't talk about it. They were... You can talk about it if you want, I just haven't seen it. Right, they're basically... Open Fight Night is next week, so they did, um... Four matches to see who would get the world title shot. They had a really good opening segment with Bobby Roode and uh, Hulk Hogan, which I thought was very good. Hulk Hogan was really doing the old school sort of baby yeah. face, where Robert Roode. This was actually very similar to the Lesnar thing, where Roode had a lot of uh, demands, demand, demands, because but not because just because in my contract, but because he's the champion, and next week will be he will be the longest reigning world champion in TNA history. So he wanted to have a big party next week and said he wanted green M&Ms, no nope, other ones. And then Hogan was like, brother, you're not, you're not the longest reigning champion yet, brother. And then tore it up. And he was, Robert Roode was shocked. <laughs> and then basically the whole roster came out wanting a title shot. So he, Hulk Hogan made four matches and said, whoever the four winners are, he'll decide of those who gets the title shot next week. Yeah, so. I liked when they all came out. It was cool. No, yeah, it made sense because they all want the title shot. It made the title seem important. Shocking bloody concept there. Um, we had Orvidy Bully Ray. Yeah. Bully Ray. Well, this was. I want to give TNA credit here. What? what would happen in WWE, okay? Say they had John Cena in the ladder match against uh, whoever. Or. Then John Cena the next night is in a qualifier for the title and he goes out and he beats Cody Rhodes. What actually happened here was, OVD, because he was in a ladder match the previous week, he came out, and he was all injured. Mm. And, and he had his leg taped up, and he had his arm taped up, and he came out, and he, was, he couldn't beat Buddy Ray, because he was injured from having a ladder match the night before. And Buddy Ray beat him. And I went, well, that makes sense. Good job. <laughs> you know? Mm. So that was good. Buddy Ray beat him clean with a cutter... Um, Buddy Ray then cut a really good promo backstage talking about how he hates the Kardashians because they are anti-bullying. Oh, God, yeah. What did he call them, like? Uh, <laughs> Chloe, Kim, and Curtis or whatever. It's something really funny, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bully Ray is great. I don't know why I stopped watching TNA for so long because Bully Ray is on. Joseph Park is on. The only thing they're missing is Scott Siner, the most entertaining man in wrestling. Exactly. Um... They had right back. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Imagine. Um, they had a <laughs> battle royal, which I, I don't like battle royals, but I guess in this way it made sense. Yeah, um, I noticed Crimson, the undefeated Crimson got thrown out. Yeah. There'll be no mention of that next week, though, because uh, it doesn't count, I suppose, for some reason. Sure. ODB was in it as well, by the way. Uh, yeah. Oh, dirty bitch. Uh, one dirty bit. <laughs> um, yeah. So the match was... It came down to Austin Aries, Gunner and AJ. Gunner eliminated Aries and AJ picked him up and dumped him over the top rope for the win. Hooray. Um, the only problem I did have with the whole idea of making these four matches was a lot of people who were in the four matches who were picked above anyone else were people who were beaten the previous night. Like AJ was beaten. Uh, Van Damme was beaten. Uh, Jeff Hardy was beaten. Yeah, that didn't make a lot of sense to me. But yeah, I suppose they say one a match. Yeah, but like WWE really just put me in a beat straight back into a title match. Yeah. Um. Then we had. Let me have a look here. Uh, we had the AJ Daniels Kazarian segment where um they had video footage this week of AJ going into a hotel room with Dixie <laughs> Carter. Oh my God. Oh, man. How are they going to get out? Scandalous. Apparently, AJ is banging out Dixie Carter. That's the storyline they're doing. I love him. Oh, <laughs> she just needed her VCR fixed or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, she's in some sort of hick motel, so. I quite like how scandalised Daniels and Kazarian are. I think this is <laughs> so shocking and awful. Kazarian? What didn't he naked pictures of himself to some escort or something. Can't play. Pretty sure he did. Oh well. 
that was in real life, not in fake wrestling world. Um, we had Anderson Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy got his win back here with a, with a roll up similar to the previous night. Mm -hmm. um, match was quite short. wasn't too bad. Uh, probably I probably enjoyed it more than the pay per view match, but that might have been because of the finish and Anderson's conduct afterwards left a bad taste in my mouth. Um, <laughs> He said, hang on, his condom actually was just a bad taste in your mouth. His conduct. Oh, that's, that's, that's funny. The condom tasted quite nice. Um, oh! Oh, oh, oh. Um, Gail Kim. Oh my god. Uh, Russ Tech. Tech, I can call her Tech Macker. Brooke Tech Macker. Tess Macker. <laughs> and Velvet Sky had a three, had a three way. Jeez, I wish. They had a triple threat match. <laughs> uh, Sky is, is really awful. Gail Kim won. That's all you can say about that. Uh, Small Joe Kurt Angle had a really good match. Wow. Best Joe match I've seen in a while. Um, Angle beat him with a really nice spot, I must say. Joe was going for the muscle buster. Had him up on the top rope. Angle, I think, headbutted him. Joe fell off. Joe went back to try and do it again. And Angle... Left over him and hit a sunset flip pin for the win. Hmm. Which is a nice spot I've seen before, so I quite enjoyed that. Good job, Kurt, and good job, Joe. Good match. Well done, lads. Well done, lads. Uh, that was actually the main event. And yeah, right. Bully Ray, Jeff Hardy, Styles, and Kurt Angle have now qualified for next week for the chance to fight Bobby Roode for the title. So we'll see who gets the shot next week. Good show. Probably better than Rob and respect there. Best uh -huh. show of the week. Um, it was it was a pretty good show. It was a good show. Would you believe? Um, yep. So I'm just going to do my my uh, feature now, which I had. Feature. It is the return of the Fave oh. Five, the top five. Oh, I thought it was a new feature. Whatever I can't. No, it's a hold on. Uh, we can give it a new uh, name, I suppose. Uh, the f the dead dead five of dear. I don't know. Yeah, pretty well done. <laughs> <laughs> but God, five. Um. So this week I have hastily thrown together top five. What's all the noise? Yeah, right there. Come on. All right. Top five most frequently botched spots. <laughs> okay. Yep. Number five. Number five is is not so much a botched spot. As, uh, as an inc uh, a move that is done incorrectly, a lot, and it's hitting the ropes, the Irish whip, by God. I think we talked uh, earlier about John Cena with his foot at head height when he hits the ropes. Uh, <laughs> never mind Kenny Kelly when she uh, hits the ropes with all the force of a light summer breeze. Uh, is this something that people learn day one? A wrestling school? I'm not a trainer, so I, I couldn't possibly comment. Maybe. Yeah. I think the first thing they learn is how to do a bump. But hitting the ropes should be up there at, at, uh, on tough enough then they have to hit the ropes the odd time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. Uh, number four, Shooting Star Press. Yeah. We had mm. Brock Lesnar famously at WrestleMania. We had uh, Billy Kidman almost kill Chavo Guerrero with one. Haskins. Mark Haskins. There was that one in Botchmania where the guy tried to do one to the outside and just oh landed God. on the post. <laughs> that was the best one. <laughs> you you see guys do spring roll runs to the outside and just kill their face on stairs. <laughs> uh, maybe the, people, if you can't do a proper shooting star press like Evan Bourne, uh, just do it at elbow or something. Not like CM Punk's one though, because that's bad. Mm, no, do a good one. Uh, number three, ta any sort of table spot where the table either doesn't break or breaks too early. And you see that happen quite a lot. I know, again, on Botchme, the uh, Japanese table is a, a long running gag. Yeah. Uh, and then, obviously, famously, you have Triple H trying to pedigree Kurt Angle at SummerSlam 2000. The table gave way. And you see a lot of ones actually where people. A lot of table matches where they throw them into the table for the finish or whatever and they just bounce off the table and they awkwardly have to do another move mm. to actually finish the match. Uh, number two, Sabu's triple jump moonsault. Yeah. Anytime yeah. where Sabu tries to balance on the top rope. 
Yeah, yeah, or do yeah. anything else. <laughs> or walk to the shops. <laughs> Sabu. You <laughs> don't fire! Fire up! I mean, Sabu botched a lot of his movies, but I think the, the, the triple jump... Uh, not moves up, triple jump, plancha, whatever he used to do at the outside. He would botch quite a lot. And he did do a moonsault quite frequently as well. Anytime he set a chair up, basically, and jump from the chair to the top rope, he would more often than not have to just fall off and try to do it again. And the number one botch spot, do you want to wager what I've put at number one? Um. It's, a, it's, it's a spot that's nearly almost always botched. Sunset flip power oh. bomb off a ladder. Ah, oh, sorry, Barry. I've, I've, I've shot my load too early, but there you go. Oh, I know that is, brother. <laughs> Almost never done, right? I think I've seen it done once, maybe. And they always try it, so. <laughs> I cannot hear what Barry's saying. He's yeah, laughing. Get, I'm laughing. I'm laughing. get out of the shoe, Barry! <laughs> I made a spot shoe. He's in a spunk tube. <laughs> That's what I heard. <laughs> no, I made a spunk joke. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was thinking about what I wasn't doing a spunk tube. Um, so that's my feature. We won't be doing that again, so... <laughs> we might. No, we might. Not that specific one, but... Well, Try five. If anyone wants to do it, I've done it this week. There you go. So that was the, illu that was the illustrious, much-anticipated return of the five this thing. Let's <laughs> <laughs> not next week. Um, Kane's uh, five list cock. <laughs> in uh, in our final feature for the night, uh, we want to talk about over the limit. Oh jeez, we still talk over the limit. This show's never gonna end. Okay. Oh, let's do it quickly. Hang on. No, no, no we can know we do. I just forgot about it. That's all. It's all right, Kane and Zack Ryder on YouTube. Oh, look forward to that one. Never mind. Uh, do you know what? I watched The Miz and Santino last time, and you know, for a little pre pre. Pre pay for your match, that was, you know, it's fine. Not, I'm not going to be watching Kane Zack Ryder. Yeah. Uh, Layla versus Beth for the woman's thing. Oh. Um, do you think they're going to have Karma ever return? No. I hope not. not. I really don't think they will at this stage. I think they would have done it by now if, if they were going to do it. It'd be a bad time to do it because it's like the most forgettable, least important pay per view ever. Um, as far as Layla and Beth. Mm. It's better than, say, Kelly versus Beth. Well, yeah, because they've done that before so many times. Much, but <sighs> Not right, it's significantly better. Yeah, I, I was, Layla's a hundred times better than Kelly is. That's true. Um, um, or, or, or Truth and Kofi. Well, I mean, do you think that Layla's going to lose or is Layla going to win? She win. She only had it for, for a, a cup of tea and a, a bicky. A biscuit. <laughs> a biscuit. <laughs> I left the S out. I think I think they're done with Beth. Especially if, if Karma is not coming back, I think they're done with Beth. If Karma comes back, do you think they'll just do Karma Layla then? No, I think I think they'll do Karma Beth eventually, but just not now. Okay. I think the best way to do it maybe is Karma to come back as a heel. And Beth to be a baby face. They need to introduce some more women. <laughs> yeah, they do actually. They haven't really debuted anyone that I can think of in a while. But Layla returned last month. Right, debut. 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 Well, I know you want that English one to cut debut, eh? Nah, she's good. Uh, she is. Well, who's good then? Yeah, they, they were. Uh, Eva Lee. That one off top. Yeah, yeah. And, um. Eddie Guerrero's daughter is awful. Yeah. <laughs> Raquel uh, Diaz, I think she calls. Naomi is really good, obviously, but. She's too busy dancing like a dinosaur. <laughs> I know. Dancing like a dinosaur. Is she dancing like a dinosaur? Though? Yeah. yeah. Never seen a dino the, the, dinosaur. The dance. funkadactyl thing. Yeah. The funkadactyl. Uh, Our truth in Kingston versus Jack Swagger and Dolph Ziggler. The titles. Uh, I can see. Truth and Kingston retain. That'll probably open yeah. the show, I'd say. Yeah. Seamus and Randy Orton versus Jericho. No, Seamus versus Orton versus Jericho versus Del Rio for the title. <laughs> I think Seamus as a champ is is over. Not working. Yeah. Yeah. I can see them putting it just back on Orton for the time. Yeah, of course. Maybe, yeah, maybe they're Rio at a stretch. Yeah, I, I, I mean, in two minds between the fact that that's not working and they might just panic and turn Seamus heel and have Orton win versus their stubbornness of like insisting that he has to get over 
Just being on him and having him beat like Randy Orton clean or something. Could be a good match. Yeah, then he did beat Orton. On Smackdown clean. Yeah, but like broke kick to the face in 20 seconds. Um, CM Punk versus Daniel Bryan for the WWE title. Ooh. Ooh, Ooh. my pants are wet. Thinking about it. It'll be good. Be yeah. good. You know what? I don't think this will be as good as uh, Daniel Bryan versus Sheamus. No. Mm. It's a lot of uh, close. close. I don't know. I think I think the Brian Sheamus dynamic had more to it, where Sheamus was the big power house, and these two guys are quite similar. Punk and I just get the, I just get the feeling that they're going to try some really cool stuff, and CM Punk's going to fall on his fucking face in the middle of it, like he always does. Mm. I think it'll be good, but mm. it'll be good. It's going to be really good. I can't. I don't want to undermine it too much. Yeah. Uh, John Long, I just John Cena. Uh, anyone who's employees gets fired if they run in. So basically, Big Show or Brock Lesnar are going to run in, and likely not Brock Lesnar because no way they're wasting one of his dates on advertised. I I think what would be clever for him to do is earlier in the night, backstage, John Laurinaitis fires Laura Tensai, and then Laura Tensai just comes out and wrestles the match for him, and then he hires him again. <laughs> Instantly. I get the I get the impression they're already giving up on ten side. Yeah, but I mean I think it'd be something clever. <laughs> I hope Big Show turns and we get to reunite Albert and Big Show <laughs> in time for WrestleMania. They can have a rematch with the Undertaker. Yeah. Will Nathan Jones finally show up for his match? <gasps> Your body drunk out. I like how that just gets like no mention at all in terms of the Undertaker's history. That that was meant to be a tag match. That would kind of ruin it if he had one tag match. Well, Nathan Jones did come out at the end of it anyway. Hmm. Yeah, but it wasn't about tag match, so you know. Mm. Mm-hmm. Anyway, that's the show. I'm pretty much interested in one match. Is Lauren Ice going to win or is Cena going to win, do you think? Lauren Ice. Lauren Ice. Yeah. Cause he, oh, he's fired if he loses, by the way. I have no interest in this show at all, by the way. Even with this uh, Daniel Bryan punk match. Oh well. Raw has, has just killed any enthusiasm I had for this company. And now it's going to be three hours long. Hooray! So that's the show everyone. Uh, we'll be back next week with another great one. Send us your emails, send us your tweets, send us your everything. Um, we're going to review Over the Limit. We're going to talk uh, whatever else develops over the next coming uh, week. And uh, yeah, so um, I guess there's nothing left for us to say except good night. It is goodbye from me, Barry Murphy. It is goodbye from Joe Towner. <laughs> and it is goodbye from Paul Griffin. Chairshotpodcast.com, Facebook.com slash Chairshotpodcast, YouTube.com slash Chairshotpodcast, at Chairshotpod on Twitter. Toodle peep. Mm-hmm.